right, go ahead. Yo, welcome to another episode of Unpredictable Thoughts Podcast. Your boy Troubles in the building. Um, so we drinking, of course. I got the Smirnoff Moscow Mule Mix. I really like it because it's much cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's much cheaper uh, instead of buying your Tito's of vodka by itself. Then you got to buy your, um, what else you got to buy? You got to buy your ginger beer by itself. And you got to buy the little 79 cent lime juice. Yeah, 79 cent though? Yeah, probably. I don't know. 79 cent, 89 cent, one of them. But, hey, with the Moscow Mule Smirnoff brand, it's all infused. I still add ginger beer just because of the, the bubbly wubbly. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you are drinking, make sure you drink responsibly. Uh, call somebody. You know, if you are in the military, you know you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> like always, a ride alive, baby. Even yeah. if you're not in the military, you know, just just call somebody. You get a ride. And I'm on Ciroc. That's all I drink. Peace, Ciroc. That's it. Hey, uh, for those that don't know, that's uh, that's boy Ford. That's it. <laughs> Short, straight to the point. Straight to the point. That's it. <laughs> but um, it's, today's been crazy. This, I know uh, since my last podcast, it's been like a major gap. You know, I just been busy. I just got back from Cuba. Uh, you ain't even take your boy with you. It's Cuba. all good. <laughs> it's a cruise. It's a I cruise. Feel you, I feel yeah, it's the it's the big B day cruise. I I kept that one quiet for real, for real though. Yeah, I think I found out when you left. I think you told me you was going on a cruise, but you ain't say nothing about the birthday. Yeah, you know, the reason why you you just like I'm going on a cruise. And I seen you on your uh, Snapchat. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> okay. Cuba was was like the highlight. Like we went to Grand Cayman and Cozumel, Mexico. Yeah, Cozumel, I really didn't like. Uh, Grand Cayman, it's like fifteen banks in one block. Um, for those that don't know what uh, Grand Grand Cayman is, that's where they launder like tons of money out there. I'm like, you got banks sharing like a plaza with like a restaurant. It's like the bank is downstairs and like a sushi spot <laughs> upstairs. I'm like, normally I thought banks was kind of supposed to be like a standalone um, building, but like, there's so many banks out there. It is crazy. Um, Cuba, I enjoyed it. it wasn't that Cuba isn't really one of those sightseeing places or whatnot. I think the the hype about Cuba just because because you can't you haven't been able to go yeah motherfuckers been d blocked yeah. <laughs> for for all this time so I was like yo let's go let's go let's go so went and I just found out so much history about like what Cuba was supposed to be so apparently. Cuba was supposed to be what Vegas is now. <laughs> I don't know how you, yeah, that's yeah, that's tough to spin that, you know. Because I've been to Vegas, I never been to Cuba, but yeah, I can't see it, you know. Well, because back then Cuba was like they had casinos and shit everywhere, or whatnot. So you know, it's like a certain part of Cuba to where it's only 90 miles to Miami yeah. or whatnot. So I'm like, yo, for real, for real, in the hindsight, that's a quick day trip. A couple hours, hey, let me go do my thing and then pop back over. Yeah, especially on the water when it's, you know. Yeah. yeah. I feel you, I feel you. Yeah, so, like, I heard that more than once off of confirmation. Cuba was supposed to be what Vegas is today. And I'm like, damn. I mean, well, Havana. Yeah, that's still I mean, yeah, get Havana, there. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, they open up tourism back up, so you can go there now, and it can't eventually get back there. But yeah, but uh, I guess the hype about Cuba is the the old school cars. Yeah, yeah. They got so, a lot of American cars out that way. Yeah, and it's like the the fifties, and I mean, I ain't that big in the cars, but like they old school. I yeah. I got some uh, pics, exclusive pictures. And all that good stuff, and the cigars, I guess. So you could carry about a hundred cigars back per person. That's another hustle, by the way. You know what I mean? I don't smoke cigars, but if y'all hit me out, hey, if I ever go to Cuba, link up, <laughs> link up, link up, link up. Speaking um, of, um, we got some more of that uh, pure white Hennessy. So if y'all need some of that, hey, oh uh, yeah, I'm. Let me know. <laughs> got them bottles on deck. We got about like ten bottles right now. So yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get. I got two more on the way, and then I'm gonna plan another trip. So, and then I'm about to get six in October. So there you go. So, bam. Link up. 
Hey, pure we, white Hennessy. Yeah, pure we white Henny, cigars, the dad hats. We, we plug in everything. Hey, that's what it's for. It's all about brand placement. Yeah. Right uh, on the topic with what you want to talk about, right? Um, I want to, well, that, but I want to, I guess, give a shout out to, well, not a shout out, uh, send my condolences to Mac Miller. Yeah, yeah, rest um, in peace. I'm not a fan. I, I didn't, like, I didn't listen to his music hardcore. I'm not about, probably not about to listen to him. He just didn't resonate with me like that when it, come, when it came to music. I did like the song with, uh, Currency and Mac Miller, Money Shot. That was the only time I really messed with him, Mac Miller. But uh, he died of overdose, yeah, yeah. which I kind of find. Uh, that's the thing. That's the way right now with the younger generation, though. Because if you look at what uh, Demi Lovato, mm -hmm. she just had her overdose. So I mean, was this like her second or third time? Man, she, she's just to be blunt, yo, she a junkie. I mean, <laughs> let's just keep it one hundred. Yeah, yeah. She, she a junkie. Yeah, I, I don't so, really know too much about her. And then um, the dude, uh, what's his name? Fredro, uh, I can't think of the dude's last name. Santana? Yeah. So he I, I wanted he, to say star so bad, but nah. it's Fredro star. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. That's a little grimy. Yeah. But yeah, he, he died from a drug overdose. So, I mean, that's the wave right now. Like, you think about who all hot in the music industry right now. These younger cats, man. Mac Miller wasn't hot, though. To certain people, he was. I mean, you got, it's. Different, different genre. Like Tekashi I didn't listen to him. Is hot. <laughs> he buzzing, but I don't think he hot. Uh, I mean, he he buzzing more yeah. than what Mac Miller is. Yeah, right but now. I think Mac Miller's music was better than Takashi Six Nine. That's yeah, just my yeah. opinion. Qualities, you know, yeah, lyrically. That's just my yeah. opinion. So, um, shout out to PA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So rest in peace, Mac Miller. For the kids listening up, man, just let the drugs go, man. Yeah, it ain't even no point. Nah, like, just just let it go. Yeah, yeah. Let it, let it go. I mean, you know, you got functioning. Cause then, wasn't he going with uh old girl? Or no, they broke up. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even get me a nah. <laughs> goddamn ball alert. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just, if it ain't on there, I don't know about it. Cause like I said, I ain't never. I wasn't a huge Mac Miller fan. I heard a couple songs or whatever, but. I got a question. Do you think, like, when, you know, some of these artists be, uh, be like, yo, rest in peace, blah, 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 blah. So, the case in point right now is Mac Miller. Do you think, like, somebody famous, just give me a, a somebody famous. I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> so, let's take it back. Now, we're going to go back. We'll come back to that this person, but let's go back to Triple uh, X. Okay. Uh, XXX, X, Tentacion or whatever. Yeah. Yes, I believe like celebrities feed into that. Like that's the movement, that's the vibe. So I think sometimes they'll shout people out just for that purpose, if that's where you was going. I kind of yeah, yeah. So my what I was going with it was, do you think celebrities be like uh, Google? They go on Google and be like me and Mac Miller, and then screenshot the picture and post it on social media. Because it like for some people, I feel as though like yo, you just don't have that picture in your phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I could see that, but it, I mean, it depends on the platform of that person. On, like, I, I wouldn't see a Jay Z doing that, or you know, somebody that's already established, but somebody that's that's buzzing, but not really out there like that. Yeah, and, and you know, say somebody that passed away that that got a little more buzz than they got. I could see that happening. Like, yeah. oh, I got a picture with dude. Let me run it up right quick. Yeah, I could see that happening, but but I mean, like, yo, going on Google, like. Uh, <laughs> Or hitting up with their assistants or something like, yeah. yo, you remember I got that picture with such and such? Hey, see, see if you can find that for me. They go on Google, yeah. screenshot it, crop it. <laughs> they might, yeah. yeah. I, I could see that happening. I mean, like I said, it just depends on the person's level. What they yeah. Got. And then, you know, what what kind of uh, what kind of success they trying to reach for. I could see that happening. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was thinking about that on the, on the drive. I was going to post as a status, but I was like, let me get it out on the I mic I mean, first. whatever you can get to get a little buzz going in the industry, man, uh, that, that's what it is. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, rest in peace to Mac Miller. Um, hey, stay away from the drugs because it, it's not worth that. Let it day. go. It, it's not. Like, it's not. And if um, if you are depressed, reach out. Talk to somebody, family member, strangers, a therapist, somebody. Because, you know, yeah, he was doing drugs. But if you kind of layer it out. He's probably depressed. No. And to another point, man, if you in somebody's circle like that, 
Yo, talk to your people. Man, yeah. I was just talking to the old lady about it too, man. Like, how you gonna be in that man's circle and not try to get him away from it? Not saying I don't like I said I don't know the situation, so I don't know if they were trying to get him away from it or not. But I just feel like, man, in that in that instance or in that circle, like somebody's got to be a voice of reason. Cause you, you got so many yes men in that area, so it's like, uh, could be good. When he's high, that's when he makes the best music. Lil Wayne, Eminem. Hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Eminem. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to Let's it. Get to Eminem. It. Goddamn Kamikaze album. First thing first, I am not a huge Eminem fan. I am. And I'm going to tell you why. Why? Eminem raps about too much. He says he's anti-gay or whatever, but he raps about a lot of gay lyrics. <laughs> like, Penis in your mouth, this. Penis in your ass, this. Like, he raps about a lot of homophobic stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, like, to me, that like, why? <laughs> Can he rap? Yes. Yeah. Lyrics on fire, metaphors, rhyming schemes, bars. How he twists his yes. words for them to rhyme. Yes. Yeah. Like, like, I'm not, I just, you listen to any album he ever put out, I promise you, three, four of the songs, you're going to hear that. And to me, that I'm like, ah, come on, and I'm like, like rap about something else. But now, now we got that out the way. Okay. Kamikaze, I listened to the album, dope album. Again, you got the same thing that I was just talking about. But the album was dope. But it reminds me of more mature Marshall Mathers. Like, I, I, for me, Eminem comes in three phases. He comes in Eminem, which you have revival. You may have. The recovery album may come into that, and you may have the relapse album that that may come into that round, and then you have Slim Shady, and then you have Marshall Mathers. Well, just to keep it a buck, this is only the first album I listened to all the way through. What? I just, I'm just not a fan. Yeah, man. okay. Like, like I grew up on Eminem, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not like you know his uh, his little catchy jingles, "My Bum Is On Your Lip." You know, you hear that, and it's just kind of like, what what are we what are we doing? Yeah. So, I'm not a super huge M fan, but I give him his credit. He can rap. So, like I said. Not I even like his freestyles and underground. And that's why I, I go there. Put him on a feature, nice. Mm. On his own, I, I I take my chances, whatever. But you put him on a feature, I listen to somebody like, yo, M and drop, and what's the name? Drop this. All right, I go search for it. Mm -hmm. But if you just tell me, like, M dropped the song, it's like, okay. Damn. Yeah, I'm just not a fan yeah, like, yeah, yeah. to the point where I go, you know, look out for it, look out, look out for his stuff. But I will say, when I seen the album out, I was like, okay, this ain't no publicity stunt. Like he just dropped it out of nowhere. Let me check it out. Listen to it. It was dope. But when he started calling out names, wee. I want to get on. I want to get on that topic. Um, name calling, cool. He's he's been on that for his yeah. career. But it was just certain names yeah, that, yeah. like, people were saying they were diss. And I'm like, yo, I don't deem that as a diss. Like, when he said Little Yachty name, I don't deem that as a diss because he was like, yo, I just don't like the rap. And what he said, and he said it in there, too, um, something to the effect of he not he not knocking no mama rappers. It's just not for him. Yeah. I mean, I can respect that shit. It's some mama rappers I don't listen to. <laughs> And to me, I don't deem that as a diss. Like, oh, you know, Eminem does like no. just like right now. Uh, I don't listen to Eminem. Yeah, I give him his credit; he can rap. Yeah, I'm just not for me when you're talking about the shit that you're rapping about. And there's only so many albums you can rap about beating your wife up, and you know what I mean. So, yeah. but the two names that I will say, well, one surprised me, um, Machine Gun Kelly. I listened to him a little bit. I know he can spit, but when he said Joe Button's name. Joe, but I mean, I seen that coming though. Yeah, yeah. But why I pick on Joe? Because Joe says something. It was slight. He just said he didn't like his last album. He went in though. <laughs> I mean, hey, he, got, he got his podcast, so you know he had to have a topic and and he carried his on uh, his podcast. But but that, but if that's your boy and because they signed in the same. No, 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 no. That's what I was about to tell you. Have you listened to uh? Joe Button's latest podcast? Uh, no, no, no. He was saying that he was better than Eminem yes. for the longest. Yes, he said that for the last uh, decade. 
uh, when it came to just straight rapping. Yeah. He's better than M. Uh. You think about what M put out in the last 10 years? Yeah. I mean, Joe ain't really put out nothing, but. I mean, Joe lost a Hollow to Dawn in Battle Rap. Hey. <laughs> Joe was battle rapping like he was like he had a cadence like it was it wasn't like um it, it was he he rapped like, like it he was, was a, a beat yeah like he, he was making a song yeah but uh hey with Eminem with Joe Button to me like I understand Joe is media right now Joe needed to respond back with lyrics nah yes yes he nah. did nah and I'm gonna tell you what only only reason why I say that is because I already listened to all right, one on bias. I like Joe Buttons. Okay. So I respect Joe Button. I don't dislike him. Yeah, yeah. I, I respect him. It's lyrics. Don't don't try to put him commercial shit. Like I, I really don't like when people that's lyrical try to make a commercial album. Cause it just don't work out too well. Mm. So give me a Joe Buttons mixtape. Hands down. Like I don't think there's too many rappers out there that can fuck with him on a mixtape. I agree. And then so when, like I said, so listen, put out a diss song. We we in the era of a spinrilla, yes, to where you could just singles. He, he said that, yeah. but like I said, you gotta listen to his podcast because I'm about to give it to you. But it's biased because I, I I listen to Joe, I like Joe, and then I also heard the podcast. So I heard a song from uh, M. Mm-hmm. I listened to Joe's podcast, and he was hype. He was animated. He laid it down for uh, M. And I mean, I mean, I don't know who who's got the upper hand right yeah. now, but. What did Joe say in the podcast? Joe said he retired from rap, and how you know, convenient. But no, 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 no. He said, but M with the uh, the domestic violence bars is not enough to get him out of retirement. But he said if Eminem wants to go, he ready. But he need Eminem to make a better track because the shit that he put out just ain't worthy of a Joe Button's response. Now, like I said, I don't know if. Joe's at that at that peak where he can demand that. That's what I'm saying. Like what? I'm biased, okay. so I want to see it. Yeah, Eminem, I want to. I want to put see out it a too. track where you go at Joe Buttons, so we can get Joe out of retirement and put out a, a diss record. A but it'd be record. like, like a, let's get to the hip hop. It'd be like a normally beef records go. You drop one, yeah. I drop one, then it go. At this point, it'd be Eminem dropping two. Nah, but he, I mean, it may really drop nothing though, like that. It's a slight. Yeah, that's slight. too slight. Uh, like, it ain't. It ain't Machine Gun Kelly. That Machine Gun Kelly. It ain't. Yeah, it you ain't wanna that. Go, like, you wanna go to that? We can go to that. Let's go to it. Okay, man. Like I said. <laughs> so when it came down to this whole Eminem, like for the for those that do listen to Unpredictable Thoughts podcast, know that like I don't really discuss uh, hip hop, but I'm so excited right now. Hip hop <laughs> is back in the essence. It's coming back. Yes. It's not a. And the reason why I say it's coming back because we don't have a lot of rappers that's still doing it. Because if you compare from uh, Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem, Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem, and then Pusha T and Drake, right? That's what we're looking at. Probably like a four month gap. Yeah. 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 But so, I mean, so mind you, back in the early two thousands, when like bo- when you when you had was, whole clicks, you yeah, had, you had whole clicks. Motherfuckers was bootlegging D- uh, yeah. CDs. You had uh, what, what was uh. DJ P. Cutter dropping the Street Wars. You had DJ Green Lantern, DJ Who Kid, shit like that. We had whole masterpieces of like, yo, such as Busta Rhymes dissing X, Y, and Z, Cameron dissing Jay Z. And then there's whole labels that was beefing back then. Yeah, whole labels. So So. we ain't there yet. Obviously, everybody independent. You know, you got one or two cats over here. But everybody like to troll a lot. That's the thing. Everybody like the social media troll, which I don't like. But so it's Eminem, they can't rap. huh? It's because they can't rap. Exactly. So Eminem dropped a whole body of work. Yeah. Dissing people left and right. Yeah. I immediately, I was like, the only person I can kind of give it to him is Joe Button, lyrically. Like, can lyrically spar with him. I was like, okay, cool. I count everybody out. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm not a Machine Gun Kelly fan, so I instantly count. Just to him keep out. it a buck, yeah. I ain't see it coming. Yeah. Like. I think, uh, I don't know if I was on Facebook or Instagram. No, I had to have been on Instagram because I don't be on Facebook like that. So I had to have been on Instagram. I was scrolling, and I seen something like with the Eminem picture, and then it's like MGK responds to um, Eminem. And I'm like, damn, M just dropped, like, click. And then I heard that snippet. So then I went to Google, and I'm like, 
MGK respond to Eminem. And I heard a track and I was like, yo. That shit fire. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> fire. Yeah. M and what's crazy about the whole situation is it started from an old tweet from uh, MGK about his daughter. Yeah. Like, so years I- ago. Like Three, four years ago, or something like that. Yeah, because uh, Eminem's daughter Haley, yeah, or not, she was about sixteen at the time. I, I don't know, I don't, like I said. I don't and then Machine Gun Kelly was about his early twenties. Yeah, like I think he was twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I read up on that part, but I mean, I think I it was so but, but, so distant, and then for Eminem, to, like he came out aggressive, and you know what I mean. I was like, oh shit, if you, who are getting that? I had to think about it for a second. Then he said Kells, and I was like. R. Kelly? Yeah, you know I thought I mean? of the same thing. So then, too. When, like, when I heard, when I seen that, and I was like, "Oh, MGK," then I went back and listened to the track. Fire! I immediately put it on my. I shared it on uh, Facebook. I sent it to my homeboys in our group chat. I was like, "Yo, what y'all think M gonna do?" But honestly, he in a lose lose situation. He should have never. He should have never brought it up. Eminem. He can't win. Who Eminem? Yeah. Like, he destroyed Machine Gun Kelly. What does that prove? Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly said in this in in uh in the record as well. Yeah, like what he said, we're both dads from the Midwest. <laughs> like, what do you gain? You, you destroy Machine Gun Kelly in a rap battle or rap beef. You Eminem, you supposed to, but if you lose, I mean, it's not like it's, it's, it's one of those like you, do you still have it because people still will gauge his last album, True. revival album, it is garbage. It was it trash. was trash. That's I like Chloe Septic. And that's why he came back with this one. Yeah, I like Chloe Septic with Fresher on that album. That was the only song. But um, I don't know. Eminem has been known for, if you talk about his daughter, like he's going in on you. Yeah, but it's like three, four years later. Well, you know, Eminem said, he was like, yo, sometimes that shit gets, it, it takes a long time to get back to me. Like, nah, not three, four years. Nah, but <laughs> I mean, like I said, I want to hear it. So I want him to respond. Yeah. I want to hear it. Yeah. But, I, I wasn't expecting it. No. Nah. Um, I was not expecting. And I was and I wasn't expecting two things. One for him to fire back so quick and two for it to be so so good, so, well so composed. Blunt. Like he he delivered. Oh, fuck like his yeah. his flow was video on point. Video a little garbage, but yeah. He probably on tour. Yeah, I don't care about the video. <laughs> B was on point. The delivery was on point. And then when he switched it up, so he got the up tempo flow. Mm-hmm. He killed it. And like he said I'm tired of your velour suits. <laughs> I like, told him take off the sweatpants and them dad hats. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was like cut your Yo. fucking beard. Yeah. So yeah. he said, we tired of it. He went in. Yeah. Uh, I like. He, he said, uh, he said something about me. Uh, he gonna fuck Kim. Like he won't play. I, he said, I fuck uh, a rapper's girl yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, it's Kim next or something like that. And then he he also dissed uh, G Easy. I don't really know too much about G Easy, so I ain't even gonna. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I don't know too much yeah, about we'll that. Slide past that. But yeah. I, I did listen to the um Hot 97 Freestyle. G Easy yeah. or uh No 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 uh, Machine Gun Kelly went at G Easy on that. Okay. So I mean it was dope, but like I said at the time I didn't really know what was going on, so I had to go backtrack, see why you know why he was flowing at him, but That's crazy nowadays because like back then you were kinda know you knew, who, yeah. who all beefing, but now it's like everybody's sending subliminals and indirects. That's why, again, I fuck with the Machine Gun Kelly because he called him out. He went direct at him. Yeah. I mean, M said his name. Yeah, M said his yeah. name as well. That's why I didn't like uh, the whole Pusha T and Drake situation. Well, you, you already knew Pusha T was going at Drake. Well, no, it was. Well, for this one, 2018, yes. But years prior, it was like. It was all shots. It, it was it was so long good. shots. You had to get like an album, go to track eight, fast forward to like two minutes and six seconds just to kind of really know what's going on. And it'd be like quick subliminals. Well, and you got to keep up with the hip hop, man. Like it's like But I said, it's so it's hard crazy. because it's like, yo, it's four bodies of work. They yeah. Like artists now are doing it in like their albums. It's not like back then where, you know, okay, like an album and then a mixtape. Yeah, album and mixtape. Or like how Pushy... Pusha T did, he rapped on Jay-Z's beat. And that's why I fucking love. I was like, oh, shit. Like, it, it's, yeah, I, I like shit like that. So, but yeah. Um, we, ain't you, still, yo, we ain't got those. We ain't got no real hip hop. I mean, they out there. Don't get me wrong. It's just not to the point where back then, everybody, and when I say everybody, I'll use that loosely, but everybody can spit. Oh. Like, 
Jada Kids, Beanie Seagulls, Jay Z, Styles, Styles P, you know what I mean? Like DMX, Cannabis, everybody can spit. Busta Rhymes. Like if you name somebody from that era, they could rap. And you, if you went at somebody, you had to be correct. Fabulous. You know what I mean? Like motherfuckers can spit. Now, like, who's charting right now? Like, and Eminem said in uh, in his album, he said, "Yo, y'all don't stay on topic no more." Yeah. Question for you: Do you think? So you say you're a mediocre Eminem fan, correct? Like, yeah. I don't. I respect his craft. Yeah. But like his album, how albums of work or his bodies of work, you hit or miss like, with me. Yeah. Man. Okay. Like, if he if he puts out a single with a with a feature, I'm gonna listen to it because I know he gonna go in. Mm-hmm. Anybody he ever feature, take that back. If he put out a, a feature with a with a hip hop artist, I know he gonna go in because it's gonna be like a competition. Yeah. So I listen especially because they probably that. in the yeah. studio. So like an Eminem Royce the Five Nine. Of course. Okay, so I was listening to the album, listening to the album, and I'm like, damn, you know, this is dope. Royce the Five Nine, Eminem, I'm always here. Then I had Eminem and Joyce Luke. Uh, join join a Lucas. Yeah, join a Lucas. I ain't hip on him yet, but go ahead. So I'm like, okay, cool. Then Machine Gun Kelly put out his thing, his his disc record, and I was like, I wonder how uh, join a Lucas and the Machine Gun Kelly record would be. And I'm just based off Machine Gun Kelly off of this, this Eminem disc yeah. or whatnot. Because I'm like, if you're if you ever listen to Royce the Five Nine Eminem, they went the fuck in. And that's bad I, meets I evil. fought with Slaughter Hawk, so I already know what, what that's going with. Yeah. But I only thing I heard really of Jordan Lucas was like the things that blew up. Okay. And like with uh he had I guess Chris, Chris Brown pushing him out there um on one of his songs or something like that. I saw it on social media. He got like what was that real popular buzz where the one that he got? I think it was like kind of controversial or something like that. The only song I knew about Jordan Lucas was... Uh, oh, when he was with the white dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, so like, that. your perspective yeah, versus yeah. my perspective. Okay, so I yeah. caught that, but, like, to me, that's dope. But it, it, I get the same vibe from the um, This Is America track. Well, like, it, it's delivering a message, but it's not enough to make me, like, go search your bodies of work, you know what I mean? I guess it's one of those, like, and I say with This Is America, you need the visual for This Is America or... The song yeah, is or, or it just don't resonate with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm like, yo, this is America. The song is, isn't really all that, but the visual the itself is it just sends, like, okay. Yeah. So now that I've seen the video goddamn 20 times, and then I hear it on the radio, now I'm like, okay, I could bump to it because I'm doing the damn yeah. Lord dances that they do in the video. And but, are you catching, like, you catching the visual from the video, even though you're not watching it at that time, if you already seen it, you kind of see the message he's delivering. You're like, okay. I can get with it because I know was you know what he's talking about and I can picture it. Exactly. But like I said, with Jordan Lucas, I really haven't gotten into his bodies of work because I caught that one song and then a couple little snippets from other people that pushed it, um, different songs of his, but I never really got into like his real bodies of work to see what he was capable of. Yeah. So I can't really give you my opinion on uh, Jordan Lucas and the Machine Gun Kelly. I think that'd be, I don't know, I think that'd be dope. It might be. Yeah. It might be. They probably got to be in the same studio, of course. Well, maybe a Machine Gun Kelly and a GE. It ain't even got to be in the same studio. I Not think Machine they just Gun Kelly, gotta, Jonah Lucas. And, uh, yeah. I just uh, think, like I said, it ain't got to be in the same studio. I just think they got to go directly at one another. Like, mm-hmm. let it be known. Like, we beef and we going to put out the best 16 or whatever, and we going to go from there. Mm-hmm. You spit, I spit. I spit, you spit. We go from there. Yeah. But you don't got that nowadays. I mean, unless you go on the battle rap scene, that's where you're going to get it at. I grabbed a gun and grab your son. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hip hop slowly coming back. We get into the point where it's not. Where we have substance. Drugs and talking about APs and cars. Like, it, we getting away from that. So. I'm a fan. Like anytime somebody put out something, they talking shit about somebody else, and it's on wax, and they keeping it on wax. Hey, I'm all about it. Yeah, even I really like. It don't matter who it is, honestly. Like, shit, you could put out a song against Fifty Cent, and if it got a beat, you delivering a message, and your rhyme schemes is crazy. I'm gonna hype that shit up, and I'm gonna push it. Like, yo, did you hear what Chris said about this motherfucker? Like, yeah. So go win. Your bars (laughs) better be tight though. 
Oh, they, shit, they better be. <laughs> That's the only way I'm pushing. Man, we got down sipping and drinking, drinking and sipping, feeling it. Running out of ice. <laughs> drinking slow. Oh, you drinking slow. It ain't no problem. We still got some time on the podcast. Uh, yeah, I uh, got all night. I don't know what you got to do, but. Nah, shit, I don't got shit to do. I got all night. Yeah, so, uh, man, it's, it's, speaking of controversy, it's a lot going on. Um, Always. I don't even know what, how to start this. Nike, just just go Let's with it. Let's talk about it. Nike, two military. All right, so got my Jordan shirt on. Bam. Act, active duty, uh, twenty years, twenty years, twenty plus years of experience combined, or whatnot. Um, and with this whole Nike, I'm with it. Love it. Love the message. Love everything about it. I just don't like the other side. And what I mean by the other side is the dumb motherfuckers that's goddamn protesting. Yeah. And they don't understand. All right. And it know. plays a bigger message for them protesting. Do you agree? Basically saying you're racist. Am I right or no? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to all the way say they're racist. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I told you before, I can play the devil's advocate to any argument. Okay. I can argue for either side. But I'm going to give you my opinion and my perspective first, and then I'll answer that question. So for me, like again, military vet, uh, black, African-American living in the United States. Male. A brother <laughs> who, who's who been through, you know what I mean, racist situations. And I'm only, I'm not old by no means, you know what I mean? I'm not going to give my age, but... Uh-huh. And been like in racist been situations here. in the military. Yeah, I faced it in the military. In I uniform it, sometimes. You know, in my hometown. So I, I've been there. I've seen it. I've dealt with it. But I'm not going to go out and say anybody that's opposed to Colin Kaepernick being the voice or the spokesperson for Nike right now is a racist. But I will say that plays a part in, in, their, in their opinion on it. Ooh, explain. And now, the reason why I say that is because of this. The whole message that Colin Kaepernick was trying to say was the oppression of black people or people of color. That message was being delivered by him sitting on the bench. And when people asked him about it, he told them what it was. That's it. From that moment on, everybody didn't, that didn't like that message shifted it towards, well, he's doing it during the anthem, and that's disrespect to he's protesting the military and the, and the police force. Cool. But that's your opinion because that's, he already told you why he was protesting. What? Kind of back it up, like two sentences, well, two words. You said the police and the military. Yes. The American flag, right? The United Let's States American Let's flag. That represents the military only or is that the military and police force? It's supposed to represent the American people, not mm. necessarily just the military, because if it represented just the military, we would have some, in my opinion, okay, yeah. we would have some more of a representation as opposed to just when we pass or in combat. Oh. Because you go to the average person's house, they don't have an American flag at their house. You go to the average military person's house, they don't have an American flag at their house, but they do have some form of the branches they represent i.e. Marine, I got some Marine uh, memorabilia or, you know what I mean? I got Marine, Marine, Marine Corps stuff, mm-hmm. but I ain't got no American flag. You go to you go to my parents' house, well, they don't even know they got it, but I got them an American flag. He said they don't even know For when I retire, they got one already. Yeah. I'm going to put it in a box and everything for them because of what I personally represented. Mm-hmm. So with that, I'm going to go, I'm gonna, we're going to come back to it. Yeah. But, again, this is coming from me. I represent the uniform. I represent the country and the flag. So, and I'm not offended by the protest. Yeah. I support Colin Kaepernick and as a black man. It's a silent protest. Yes. And, and, and another thing I want to point out, the reason why he's even kneeling is because a military veteran asked him to come to a compromise because he said the military veteran felt sitting down was disrespectful. Oh, so the stories I was seeing was that he was already kneeling beforehand, no. and then that's when I think he reached out Cowboy. to a military no, veteran, no, 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 and then no, that's when no. the veteran told him this is the most respectful way to do it. Kinda, but no. 
he was sitting first. So, like, when the anthem was played, he would just sit on the bench. Okay. And then uh, I think Cowboyer, I think, that's, I think that's his name, like former Green Beret or something like that, he saw him, and he told him, he was like, you know, me personally, I, I agree. I know why you're protesting. I don't agree with the method that you're protesting. Can we come to some resolution while you still protest? They had a dialogue for like six hours or something like that. Oh, shit. And the resolution that they came with is he wanted Kaepernick to stand. Kaepernick was like, no. So he was like, well, you know, how about taking a knee instead of sitting? Because that's the most respectful yes, way to. That's, that's one way to keep your protest going, but still honor the troops. So that's where the whole disrespecting the troops came from. Because it wasn't. It had nothing to do with that at first. It was protesting police brutality among people of color. And then when Cal Boyer got into it and asked him, like, when he put his spin on it, it was like, hey, you know, by you sitting, you're disrespecting the troops. So in his attempt to even appeal to the military aspect of it, certain people looked at it like, well, damn, he disrespecting the troops by taking a knee. That's where that came from. So, uh, I mean, you're a little older than me. Uh, Not that much older. <laughs> But just uh, probably knowledgeable as far as, uh, I guess, the whole taking the knee situation. In the military, right, for a military pers- personnel to take a knee, where is that doable? Doing the anthem? So Never. Ne- okay. Never doing the anthem. So I'm saying, any like, where, like, what method, where, what so situation? Where it came from is um, yeah, where, what's pretty the much origin? In, in combat, when, uh-huh. when a soldier's falling or a member of the military. They take their Kevlar off. They and, take a knee and, um, you know, I pretty much say a prayer. Yeah. You pay your respects that way. Again, respecting the fallen soldier. That's where the knee came from. Also, um, sometimes at uh, military funerals. When you present the the widow or of the fallen soldier, you, or whatever you take a knee, huh? <laughs> you 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 uh, depending on if that person stand up or sitting down, it depends on. Well, it depends on male or female. So I know females, you take a knee. Males, you gotta stand up. You gotta stand up, hinge at the waist. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, again, that's where it come from as far as you know the tradition of kneeling, not necessarily doing the national anthem, but the tradition of kneeling is is a form of paying respect to the to troops in the military. Mm. So I mean, like I said, me personally, I get it. Like I don't feel any type of way when the national anthem comes on, and somebody takes a knee, or I don't feel any type of way when somebody comes up and they just blatantly disrespects the flag. I don't feel me personally as a military vet or active duty. I don't feel any type of way because that's why I fight. And you fight for, for both rights. sides, exactly. <laughs> for you to like, disrespect or respect it. All right, and I'm, I'm, gonna t- I'm gonna switch the subject right quick, but it's on, along the same topics. Me as a military person, as a black man in the United States, I feel more disrespected by a person that represents or waves the Confederate flag because that's a du- that's a symbol of what the United States fought. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's a direct disrespectful sign. Like people will say, "Oh, that's not the the actual flag that the Confederates used." Cool, but it's a symbol that represents the Confederacy. Yeah, that's a symbol that they they use to recognize themselves. And what did they fight against was the United States for whatever the reason. Whether you want to say it was about slavery, the way of life in the South, cool. But they fought against the United States regardless of Isn't why. Isn't that like tre- treason? Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and that flag that you carry and you talking about Southern heritage. Cool, whatever it represents or whatever it means to you, it still is an entity. It represents an entity that fought against the United States, the American flag. So you got those same people carrying the Confederate flag, arguing that Kaepernick is disrespecting the American flag, carrying a flag that we fought against. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, like, to me, cool. And I'm still not mad at the people that represent the Confederate flag. Just stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> like, if that's your thing, cool, stay away from me. Because to me, that's disrespectful as an American that fought under the United States of American flag and a black man in America that lives in the South. You know what I mean? But it, it just varies because it's, and I could kind of dodge that, is because it's like, well, you know, you back then they were slaves. Exactly. So you got to realize that you weren't highly educated at that point. So it's like, okay, you may know that slavery is wrong, and it's like, well, your master be like, shit, if you fight this, you free. Uh, of <laughs> so, course I'm going to fight. So it's like, you don't know any better. 
at that point. You don't know the, the it's just like goddamn being a PFC <laughs> in the do military. You, you kind of do what I'm you not, told. Like I said, I'm not knocking anybody, but again, as you say, a flag. They it means something to you. That uh, flag, that flag, probably for them meant freedom. Represented freedom. Yeah, because I, I, it's like, yo, if I fought, if I fight, I'm free. I not, and I, that's it. That's and I get they, that one hundred percent. But again, to me, as somebody who fought underneath the American flag, yeah. that's what that represents. And like I said, I'm not knocking anybody. Just do you. Yeah. But I get the reason why somebody of color would fight under that flag during that time frame. Mm-hmm. But you don't see that same person today, or obviously not gonna see him today. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The people that represented, or at that time frame when it was whatever they was going through, that meant freedom to them. Yeah. To somebody that's fighting against that, that don't mean freedom. Fuck no. Or to the the great great grandchild that's running around with that flag today, it wasn't the same thing that your your great great grandfather was fighting for. He was fighting to keep people. In the, in the institution that they was in. Yeah. So your argument is different than your grandfather's argument. So I can't, we can't relate on that yeah. subject. Like, you you go your own way, brother. Like, hey, I still love you as a brother, but I just don't fuck with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you can't tell me this flag that fought against the American flag and Colin Kaepernick is worse than that? Mm. I can't see it. And then to go back to the Nike subject, Nike was paying Colin Kaepernick, what, a couple years before this ad came out? Oh, yeah. He was been getting and, paid. And the crazy part about Kaepernick is Kaepernick was steady giving money away yes, to all these organizations. Yes. And he wasn't even in the NFL. And the thing that a lot of people a lot of people say, well, why isn't he doing this on his own time or whatever? I say to that, when is the right time to protest? Yeah. Where's the right place to protest? You know what I mean? It should like, come from the heart. That's no, when no, the right no, time no, is. No, no, no. People will say, well, he shouldn't do it on, on TV. He shouldn't do it when, when he's got a game. He should do it on his own time. But when is the right time? When is on his time the right time? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, the whole point of a protest is to get attention, to make you uncomfortable or draw your attention to a situation that you feel isn't right. Or that you probably don't know about at all. Yeah. Well. So if I if he did that shit in the off season on his own time, who would see it? You don't get the attention. You don't get the media coverage. That's the whole point of a protest. To disrupt people's normal everyday life to bring awareness to a situation. And technically he was doing a peaceful protest. You know what I mean? But they complain when you shut down an interstate, when we shut down an interstate Block traffic. They want us to do it somewhere else. Yeah. that's They should do it over here. Okay, we're in Charlottesville. They did that. They went. They got the petitions to do that shit. And then what? look what happened. You know what I mean? So there is no right way to protest. You can do a silent protest and still get blackballed by the NFL. Or you can go and get your, your, your permits to do it in Charlottesville, Virginia, where you represent hate groups and people still end up dying. Colin Kaepernick, nobody died during this protest, but they hate this man more than they hate the fucking people that protested in Charlottesville. Mm. Explain that to me. No. Shout out to Marines that got NJP for that. And that's why I'm 45 (laughs) minutes to an hour away from Charlottesville. That's where I live. Damn. You know what I mean? Right in your backyard. Yes. That's why I'm saying, like, you can't tell me Colin Kaepernick is worse than the Confederate flag. Like, they got upset when Walmart stopped selling that shit. Look how long it's been. They should have been stopped selling that shit. Yeah. My opinion, though. Yeah. I can't, you know what I mean? That's just my opinion. <laughs> but come on, man. Now, he he blackballed from the NFL. And then to go on with that, okay, he got blackballed from the NFL. Cool. That's what y'all wanted. You got that, you know? People that disagree with Colin Kaepernick, they voiced their opinion. Yeah. They got their, they got the results they wanted. He's no longer in the NFL. Cool. Now, he's not kneeling doing the national anthem. He's, yeah, not, he's not in the NFL. He's no. not in the media because if you notice, he don't do interviews or you know what I mean. He's not. He's not out there. He's it, still doing his behind he's the still scenes doing his thing. thing. Yeah, his organizations are still collecting charities, donating, giving out. 
but he's not limelight, right? So why now, all of a sudden, when Nike picks him up, oh, y'all mad at Nike now? Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. And then, like, Nike get at you, bro. You, all you're doing is just destroying it. Like, what? So, again, tell me what it really is about Colin Kaepernick's situation that's got you mad. True. He's, he's no not, longer kneeling. Because in a sense, he's not no longer representing the NFL, right? He's not. He's doing it on his own time. Yeah. That's what they wanted, right? So now he's on his own time because he ain't got no job. He's not on national TV. Yeah. He's not doing it during the national anthem. So now you're mad because Nike decided to give him a spotlight to voice his concern. Tell me, how. what are you mad about? How can you be mad at that you got everything you wanted? You got him out. Stop kneeling doing the national anthem. You got him off TV. He's doing it during his own time. He's still donating. What are you mad at now? How how are you blackballing Nike because they gave him an endorsement deal? Yeah. It's deeper. It's deeper than the troops. You know what I mean? Like, people, a lot of people don't even know that. That's paid advertisement for the military. The DOD pays the NFL for that spotlight. I thought we we pulled out. I don't know if we did, but that's how it started. Or oh, is the Marine Corps pulled out? Yeah, yeah. I think I might I may be wrong. I believe in uh remarkable timing. I believe like each branch may pay a percentage or whatnot. And I think from last word I got, the Marine Corps pulled out. NFL. I don't know how true it is. Like I, said, I don't know about specific branches. I just know. Yeah, as a whole DOD. The DOD pays for that as a brand of uh, advertisement for recruitment. <laughs> That's why that came about. It had nothing to do with paying respect to the troops. It was so motherfuckers could sign up to join in the military. I think the DOD pulled out because the last couple of games I've seen it was civilians, or they maybe changed the order to where, because normally you be in uniform. Yeah. I think I see a lot of civilianized clothes. I don't know. I may. I mean, yeah. it could be just you know, like just different areas. But I think the um, the major sports, NFL, NBA, uh, baseball. I think they still do it, mm. and then we still be in uniform. But like I said, I haven't looked it up to know like what it is now. But I know how it all began. Yeah, was around you know nine eleven two thousand when it, when the um, World Trade Centers went down. That's when it came about to increase increase patriotism try to get recruitment for people to join the service. That's where the whole thing came about. DOD, my mom would call, <laughs> kind of throw off the little live, but that's where the whole thing came Is about. Is come back? I don't know. I, we'll man. see. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to keep it rolling, man. Um, so I wanted to say about patriotism. So, like, and if you want to be real, right, what is real patriotism in the United States? Because, and the only reason I say that is because I said it uh, – and my last podcast, oh, it's back up. We, yeah. we in the building. Hey, shout out to Mom Dukes. <laughs> mama, call you back. I, if you watching, I'm going to call you back. If anybody else watching, tell my mama, I'm going to call her back. There we go. And I shared it on my Facebook. So, yeah. But when we talk about patriotism, right? So I talked about this in the last podcast. I'm like, is it real patriotism? If you really go on, like, military installations around zero zero seven let's talk about it get to it because i i want to i want to bring it up let's get zero to it. I know seven fifty eight ish you could say 55 let's 50, talk about zero, it zero seven fifty five for for those that don't know uh military time just take the zero out in the seven in the morning and we'll say give them the backstory to what we do at zero eight Zero eight is morning colors. That's when the flag is raised in most sections or everywhere. Or everywhere. Well, I know in the uh, Marines, zero eight everywhere. Yeah, zero eight. That's when the flag is being raised, and it's it's called morning colors yeah. or whatnot. And if you get caught outside <laughs> doing morning colors, you stand at attention, salute, wait for it, music to stop, uh, slow so, slow salute down, and then you go about your day. But at, Let's talk about it. But people around 0758, 0759, or 7 in the morning, 759, 758 in the morning, you make that determination if you're going to get out your car and run. <laughs> and I'm going to speak directly to that. <laughs> is that. Is that patriotism or not? Because you running from the flag going up to, quote, unquote, which you have to honor in a yes. sense. 
being yes. active duty, but yes. it still happens. To render obedience. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To salute all colors. Let's talk about it. Case and display. Uh, to, to salute all colors, not uh, not case and display. Yeah. But what you will get from the top down is like you say, when that motherfucking five minute warning go off, people pulling up and they hear that five minute warning, they're like, okay, can I make it inside before <laughs> colors go off? <laughs> Why? Because they don't want to stand there and salute. <laughs> you have what well, we're supposed to have formations. Uh, promotion formations at zero eight, so that way we can stand out there, salute or whatever. You have people complain. Why are we doing it at zero eight? Because they don't want to stand and salute. Zero seven thirty. Let's let's do eight thirty. Let's do nine. Why not eight oh five? We can't do it at eight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've been there. I've been one of them. Yeah. Like oh shit, it was like almost eight. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna just sit in the car. I've been there. Yeah, I mean, I ain't, me gonna, I ain't gonna hold no punches. Let's keep it a buck. Yeah, let's keep it real. I've been there. I've been one of them. But it's not saying that I don't show patriotism. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, when people say, oh, it's disrespecting the troops, don't speak for me. Because what, what patriotism is to me may not be the same thing for the next person or, or the person I'm serving beside yeah. or the person that's speaking for me. Don't speak for me. But for my military people that's upset about Colin Kaepernick and the whole kneeling doing the anthem, don't be one of the ones that I've seen you take off or I know for a fact, like you sat in your vehicle. Because now I'm going to call you out on it. Like, hold on. You mad at Kaepernick? He has no obligation to. You do. Yeah. If you know colors is going off at zero eight, whether you in your car or not, get out and salute. Exactly. But why are you mad at him? Because he has no obligation to. And the crazy part, being active duty, you fought for his right to do that. That's exactly why you fought. Yeah. That's why you signed up. That's why you signed that paper. Yeah. The dotted line. Yellow Multiple footprints. Multiple times for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't did it a couple of times. Yellow footprints. Six more years to go, by the way. Yeah. Yellow footprints for the Marines. Yeah. I don't know for the other branches of service. I don't like, know what y'all Army do. Army might have, like, little green footprints. Green footprints. Uh, they probably just got, like, a line, like, staying here. Yeah, goddamn uh, Air Force. They probably got the little. They give them chairs. You know, they give them chairs. Like, uh... You know, we just taking shots. Don't <laughs> worry. We, we going to get back to topic. Yeah. But, yeah, man. So, like I said, it's, it's active duty members. I can't speak for any other service. Well, I can talk about the Navy because, yeah, they don't do it either. I've seen these motherfuckers duck out of it. But, um, yeah, it's active duty members, man. Like, when that 08 roll around, colors go off, you see cats duck out. From the top down, it ain't just Lance Corpus PFCs, privates. I've seen Master Guns, Mass Arms, First Arms. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've seen it. Even in colors I've as been well. indoors laughing at motherfuckers trying to get indoors. <laughs> nope. Not today. Stand out there and salute. I mean, they should have been inside. Or I, I've actually seen people while I was in my car, colors As going As colors off. going, yes. They, they dipping. That's they running. Tough. Yes. Or, or they just walking casually like nothing had going oh, on. I don't hear that. Come on, dog. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like clockwork. So, I mean, like I say, and then... But what? It, but I guess my bottom line question is: What is true patriotism in the United States? It's almost like, like a slave to a to a cause. Ooh. To, in order to be a true patriot to the United States of America, especially being in the service, you have to be no shit ready to die for, jump on a grenade at any moment. That's a true patriot. If somebody tell you go do something, you do it, no questions asked. No. Because you believe, your, your belief system in the American way is that strong. You mm. just do it, no questions asked. That's a true patriot to me. My is opinion. that regardless if they serve military or not? No, no, I'm talking about, I, I, I'm speaking strictly from the military perspective. Okay. Civilian, it's hard to say. Because you got some people that live in America, Colin Kaepernick, they don't, that, that don't, feel justified being, you know what I mean, in a certain situation. Yeah. So you may not be a true patriot. You may believe in the system, but it's like, okay, the system is flawed. So I got, I want some things I want to critique or view a different way in order for me to do that. I got to go against the grain, so to speak. So I'm not, in essence, I'm not a true American, if you want to describe it like that, no. because I, my opinion is different. Uh. So like I said, the way I view it, from the military perspective, you're a true patriot, instant willing obedience to orders. 
<laughs> it's just got to be that way. Like, what? How else? I mean, it's it's tough to to define what a true patriot is, but you can have somebody that go out, slap his wife around, his or her wife, husband around, but and they spouse. still. Yeah, we, we'll keep it uh, political. <laughs> you got an individual that slap their spouse around, which goes against everything that we stand for, but yet great military member when it comes to executing orders or complete missions. Some people may call him a true patriot. Mm. But, you know, he beats his wife on the, beats his spouse, him or her, on the weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wife so, like, work. it depends on the person that's viewing the situation. Uh. Damn, that's deep. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, dog, I'm deep. Mm. We talk about a lot of topics, man. I, I just like, I like real deep conversation. You know what I mean? That's just good dialogue. Yeah. Like I said, I could sit down and talk to anybody on the opposite side of the whole Colin Kaepernick situation. And like I said, just for me, I'm all about it. I And I, I go to, like this. I support police officers. I'm not one of those people that just run around and say, fuck the police and all this. I got family members that work for the correction forces. Mm. I, got, I got friends that got out the Marine Corps that's corrections officers or police officers. Hell, I think it's a Marine that got out down here that's on base right now that's a police officer. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm not fucking anti cops. I'm not anti white people. I'm not I'm not even anti Trump. I don't view I don't agree with a lot of shit he talk about. I don't agree with a lot of his principles. But I'm not out here like fuck Trump. Mm, that's your boss. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's I saw, our boss. You know dude. what's crazy? I saw a meme that said, uh, you mad, but we didn't pick Colin Kaepernick to be the face of Nike, just like you didn't. We didn't pick Trump to be the uh, face of America, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It so, was nice and witty. Yeah, but like, I'm not mad at the situations that that presents themselves. It's just like, okay, now is out there. What are we gonna do, or how can I maneuver around the situation to better myself? Yeah. Colin Kaepernick is the face. Okay, look, he's the face of Nike right now. Now what? Do I stop buying Nike? Do I keep buying Nike? I mean, Nike's still good to me. Uh, I, I mean, I, I support his cause. And yeah. Like just I said. the people that, that tore it up. I'm like. Why? Yeah. Just stop buying. Like, stop buying. Just like when when Colin Kaepernick got boycotted, ratings went down. Yeah. When Colin Kaepernick started kneeling, ratings went down. People voiced their opinion in a way that affect the bottom dollar. When he started kneeling, certain people, groups of people, we ain't gonna say no names, no races, nothing like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they boycotted. Ratings went down. Cool. They came back. When he started uh when he started kneeling. Or when it, well, when people started boycotting the kneel, he got blackballed. Mm-hmm. So it's never really like People really just misconstrued his message all the way around, and they never got back to the whole the core, the core of what it is. Nobody, in the essence, in the last let's just say year, has really talked about police brutality. Do you think uh, that's our? It's not fear. I think that's what's wrong with America. We we never face our problems. I always facts. Call, I always, I always, always felt like that. I always call America we're the biggest bullies. And what I mean by that, if yes. you kind of, if you kind of, from a military standpoint, I, I took it from the military standpoint as the wars that we kind of fought, we were kind of almost. We were supposed to win. Yeah. Any battle that we ever went to, we went into it expecting to win. We was, we was never the underdog. We was yeah, never you, the underdog. Yeah. yeah. You got to go to the battle expecting the one to win. Like, who the fuck go to I'm the battle like y'all going to lose? I, and I say this to a lot of people that I talk to individually one-on-one. And I think. When you said that uh, America never, what did you say? America can never really, I ain't going to say face their fears. Yeah, face. yeah, hold on, wait, wait. Yeah. I, I'm, I like Is fears that. the right word? No, I like that. Okay. I just wanted, I wanted to get it right because I, I've tell anybody that listens to me, the reason why America can never have a real conversation on race is because America's past. America fears the black man because of the shit that they've done to the black man. Oh. So in America, that's why you get trigger happy, trigger happy cops or people that panic because for whatever reason, America, I'm not saying just white people in general, but America 
fears the black man. Yeah. Why? Because of its history that, that's been done to the black man. You know what I mean? So, like, if anything, I, it should be the other way around. The black man should fear the white man because of what's been done to the black man. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it's America crazy. fears the black man. Because it's why like, you yo, get, you stay whooping somebody's ass. For so long, yeah. And then it's like, you become scared of them, but you're still whooping their ass. <laughs> so that, until you, like, like, as a child, and I use this theory loosely, uh-huh. but I used to get whoopings. Okay, yeah, we, I did. Until too. this shit didn't hurt no more. And then she was like, well, shit, I got to figure out something else. You know what I mean? So like, Oh, same concept. Yeah, like, it's only so much you could do to keep the black man down. Like, as you can see, we're very resilient. Like, America fears the black man because of the, the past shit that, that, that's been done to the black man. And, and woman. it hasn't. Yeah, well, I say black man, I just mean race. Okay, yeah, yeah. It hasn't killed us off. Got Spirit's it. still strong. Yeah. Like, finding new ways to maneuver. You look at Black Wall Street. During that time period, a whole black town flourishing. The new Atlanta, would you say? Kinda. You could say that. It's majority black. The population is is, is like 90% black. You could say that. Okay. But when you think about, was it Oklahoma? Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah. During that time period, that wasn't supposed to happen because of the way the, the America was set up against the black man so what can you do if you've took away everything that they all the options or you took away everything that they had or the abilities that they had to be successful and they still became successful Mm. well shit you limit them on everything but they still worked out they still education finance yeah Yeah. but they still did all that they overcame all that so now what oh shit What's left? What, we, what can we do? Start we can't. Yeah, it, we can't have these in here fucking living a good life. So you know, start what I mean? disrupting homes, yeah. mass incarcerations. Exactly, and it just grew from there. So you you bomb a whole city of predominantly well, it's all black. Yeah, you, you, black you destroy community. a whole black wealthy community. black community. Yeah. So then from there we move into drugs in the inner city. Where the fuck we getting drugs from? Let's yeah. keep it a buck. You know what I mean? We didn't have the resources to go out and, oh, let me go to Colombia and get cocaine. I just left Colombia. Like, we had help bringing that shit to the inner city. Yeah. But again, the resourcefulness of the black man was like, oh, shit, they're going to put it in our city. We're going to do something with it. We're going to flip it. I flip mean, this, we, flip that. We obviously cocaine. hurt our own people, but yeah. at the same time, you got to think, like, you put me in a box or in a corner and give me crumbs, so now I got to fucking. Make manipulate, a whole loaf. Yeah, I got to manipulate these crumbs to get ahead in life. That's my survival instincts. I'm not worried about, like, oh, I got to sell this to the white man. I just, I got to sell it. Yeah. We hurt our own people, yes, but how the fuck did it get there to begin with? True. Do you think they're just so scared of us because we're just overcoming so many That's situations? Like, and we wind up becoming so much smarter. Honestly, I do believe that. Because of facing that. those situations. Honestly, I believe, like I said. Because always being at the bottom, I bet. That's, that's, that's a given. We, we've never been put in a position where we started out up here. and. I mean, we were kings and queens at once. Well, not here. Yeah, well, yeah, not, not here. <laughs> <laughs> not here, <nigga. laughs> So, again, that's, that's just my belief. That's my opinion that America in general, not saying all... So for anybody listening or whatever, they think like, oh, he, he think, oh, no, not saying all, oh, just in general, America fears. You got black people that fear other black people. It's not a good thing. You should you should be able to walk around your neighborhood. And I was talking about somebody this the other day. You should be able to walk around your neighborhood without fear because if you my neighbor, we connect. We, we bond. We live in the same neighborhood. I should be able to come up to you and approach you like, hey, what's going on? How you doing? Whatever the case may be. But we don't have that. Yeah. Why? Why don't we have that? You got people that live in the same neighborhood that don't like their neighbor because they're a different color. Because of color is Why the that. fuck is this person in the neighborhood? Even black on black, you got black people that feel like other black people shouldn't be in a certain neighborhood. Do you think Why? it's because of the manipulation of what they've done in the past to kind of create colorism within yes, our own I community? I just feel like you Ooh. got you got different levels of it where, again, America fears the black man. You feel like if somebody of a, a certain color or 
what's the, what's the word I want to use? Uh, stereotype. It's a certain stereotype. You explain like, well, that one. So you know, we do it. We stereotype based on how you look, your image, how you carry yourself, how you walk, talk, dress, how your mannerism, stuff like that. We we stereotype. Yeah. So if you see, like me for instance, young black dude buying a house in a predominantly white neighborhood. Your first thought is like, well, I'm not saying all people, but like, well, shit, what, what is he doing? Mm. J. Cole, prime example. Niggas that, think I'm selling coke. That that story <laughs> was legit. Yeah. Like, they re- they really ra- raided his house, and his neighbors called saying they got people coming in and out. But it's just the disconnect because you don't know your neighbor. You're not in touch with the people that are living in your community, so you're not out reaching out to them. Yeah. So, like, what reason do you really have to call him? Even if he was selling dope, what reason <laughs> do you have to call the police without even going to talk to your neighbor? You should be at a position where you can go talk to him. Like, hey, man, um, it ain't none of your business, but hey, I see a lot of people coming in now. What do you What do you do? Yeah. Why can't you approach him? What What fear? What What goes through your mind to, to the point where you just automatically call the cops? Like, hey, I see a lot of people coming in. Y'all need to investigate this house. Mm. What gets you to that point? You know what I'm saying? So like, and that's that's a celebrity making millions. Imagine the average black man that couldn't, you know, that doesn't have the financial capabilities to, or that ain't just out there. Yeah, you still have the financial stability to do it. You just ain't J Cole level. So we're like, you gotta to where people, job. where attorneys may yeah. be reaching to you, like, yo, I could dead this like right now. Yeah, yeah. You, you got you making decent money. You live a good life. You, you just meet so move. many people just because off of touring and your music alone. Attorneys bumping your music, like, <laughs> yeah. Huh. Like I said, that's just my opinion. Though I I, I I strongly believe America fears the black man because of our history. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this question to be good. I'm still talking about our black men. Let's run it. Let's, uh, man, I told you, unpredictable thoughts. It kind of be going backwards, but so, you know, with the whole Nike situation, it was just so many, um, not me, it was just so many pictures I was going up. Mm-hmm. Nike Means. should be doing this, blase, blase, right? Yeah. So one that really caught my eye was instead of throwing away your Nike gear, give to the one million, one, one of the millions of homeless veterans t- that you – pretend to care about right so a post was i'm gonna read it. i'm a little drunk a little tipsy take so your time take your time it bro. was saying stop using patriotism to disguise your prejudice for black and brown people if you care so much about veterans and how come you ignore them when they walk up to your car asking for a little change military value, veterans should get free housing they shouldn't have to pay taxes taxes free health care and they should get a, a paycheck every month to pay their bills and put food on the table, but since they don't, the least you could do is stop ignoring them when you see them homeless and drowning in the street. How patriotic are you really? To that, um, I think that's the Charlemagne one. Yeah. All right. So to that, um, again, I'll say I'm biased because I am a military member, but I don't fully agree with everything he said. Um, again, had I, been, go. had I been drafted and forced to serve, I would wholeheartedly agree with getting all that because you took away my freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now I'm not a free man living in a free country, so to speak. So I agree with that. If, if I'm drafted and I'm forced to go fight a battle, whether I wanted to or not. Yes. When I come back, I do whatever obligation you force me to do. Yeah. Give me all that because I earned it. Because it's put into law. I earned that. You you took away me from my family. You took away my freedom to do whatever it was that I wanted to do. It made me go fight this war. Give me free taxes. Give me free health care. You know what I mean? Like, give me that. But Give me that. Give me that. that. <laughs> but give because me, I me. signed up, me personally, I don't feel Volunteer. Like, yes. I don't. I don't. Me personally, I don't feel like I need that because I chose to join this. This is what I chose to do. This is the career path that I wanted. So I'm, in essence, working a job. 
Mm. I got a job. Career. I'm getting money. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying into society. I'm paying my taxes. I'm doing my dues. So when it's my time to get out, when I'm however many years down the road, I don't need you to give me anything. I earned it. So I'm, I should be in a, I'm going to be in a position where I can buy me a house. I'm going to be able to pay for my health care, but I'm going to get disability because you know the Marine Corps didn't fuck your boy up. Run me, but, run me, run me till it hurt now. But that's where it comes to the point where, like I say, I've earned enough money. I've earned the respect of what should be a grateful nation to the point where they give me some benefits. I don't need everything that I feel like a person that's drafted should get. I have the utmost respect to a motherfucker that's told, hey, you going to serve four years in this war and fight for this country. I wonder how, how I got was a different that time. Yeah, I got a different uh, level of respect for those people. My bad. Those I'm, mother- oh, I'm pouring stuff. They, now they can hear it on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> they get a different level of respect from me as somebody that served, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those veterans will tell you they got a different level of respect for us because of what we go through in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. But you think, IDs. You think uh, about the shit that they was forced to do? Nah. Hey, I, I tip my hat to them. Then still coming back to America where it was still and racist. still come back to America where you look, you look in the eyes of a person that still don't respect you as a man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And again... I faced that as an adult in the United States of America. I spent two and a half, almost three years in Japan and got, obviously I didn't live there. So, I mean, I wasn't out in the, in the culture mixing with the people, but just there out going out on the weekends or after work or whatever. Great place. Loved it. Yeah. You can't tell me anything bad from my personal experience about Japan when I could come home and get treated Worse than I was treated in another country. Yeah, and you know no mean? motherfuckers don't even speak <laughs> half of shit that you yes. English so like, that you can I, speak. When I go other places, man, that's why I tell anybody like anywhere I've ever been, I felt appreciated, mm-hmm. and I'm slightly biased because obviously I'm there for a shorter period of time or whatever. But when I'm in the states, and I got people that. Don't respect me just because I'm black. Yeah. You know what I mean? Regardless of what I do. And, and like I said, I don't broadcast that I'm in the military to people. Like, if you on my Facebook, my, my Facebook is private. So if you on there, it's because you know me growing up or we serve together. I might have like maybe 20 people on there that that's a friend of a friend that I really don't know. But somehow we're connected either through the military or your family knows my family somehow. It, I don't have too many just random people on my on my uh, social media pages. Yeah. For that reason, it's like I don't broadcast I'm in the military because I want recognition. I want recognition because I'm a fucking man, and, and what I bring to what my value brings to you. If you can't respect me because of what I do, like why should we even be face to face? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I shouldn't have to, oh, I'm a veteran. You should show me respect. No. I'm a man in the motherfucking America. I'm working just like you working. Mm. But again, I, I honestly believe America fears the black man because of our history. So, in that essence, you still got people with the me- mentality that I'm lesser than you because I'm a black man. Do you think sometimes uh, when you're in uniform, you just get a pass just because of the uniform yes. alone? I wholeheartedly believe that. But you also got the people that don't that don't like military. Yeah. You got people that still, regardless of what I do as a black man, they're not going to respect me because I'm a black man. But then you do get those people that, you know, because I'm in uniform, like, oh, he's a good guy. You get those. You get that pass, yeah. yeah. you get those. I believe that. Oh. I'm telling you, like, to this day, it's... It's been times where I've gone back home and I get looks from people just, again, like, based on how I walk. Like, do-rag. I legit wear this shit to keep my waves fresh. Exactly. Dip down. Fresh down. Like. 360. It ain't got nothing about being a thug, a gangbanger, gangster, none of that. Like, my shit is for my waves. That's what I do it for. Shout out to the wave community. 
Shout out to them 360s, 720 spinners out there. If you got the 180s, you cool, but just keep your fray fresh. You know, your, uh-huh. your fade fresh. He said the Philly fresh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the right game. A little bit, but I'm good. Um, but yeah, you got people that'll look at me and be like, well, uh, side eye type shit, or just don't value me as a black man because of how I walk, talk, act, or dress. Mm. But when I put my uniform on, it's a whole different perspective. Yeah. Why? I know that about the South a lot. I guess because Why? my my career is a little bit different than other people's careers because I kind of been considered overseas a lot. So first duty station, mind you, I'm 18. I'm I'm in Hawaii, living the life, very mixy culture, yeah, or whatnot. And then after that, I go to Italy. So like, definitely living the life, very 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 mixy culture. So back then, that'd be compared to someone that was fighting war and went to Germany. In a sense, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, oh, shit, we good. Mind you, you know, for those that know, kind of like being overseas, you kind of don't realize what's going on in yeah, the United you, you States. Yeah, you detached from the, you unless de- you're watching the news or getting reports from family and stuff like that, you really can't associate with America's problems. Yeah, and then like social media at the time was chronological order or whatnot. So by the time I'm getting up, Motherfuckers Everybody going to sleep. sleep. So it's like, I'm not seeing, like, unless I'm fucking scrolling for hours, I'm not seeing, like, okay. This shit dry. <laughs> your, your, uh, your timeline dry. Yeah, my, my timeline was dry. So, like, I remember when the Trayvon Martin case hit, I was like, oh, shit, like, yo, what the fuck going on? But I was kind of getting, like, the back end of it. Because, yeah. mind you, social people weren't posting as as much as they were now like social media isn't what it is now compared back then yeah. like social media was very light a lot of people was very private like people were kind of living like the 90s and <laughs> yeah. in, in that acts in that 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 time so it's like okay you know sometimes i say living overseas you kind of you forget what you the do. fuck is going on I'm in america that. sometimes you forget that you're fucking american now, i'm telling you <laughs> depending on how well Deep you in the culture of depending on what country you living in. Well, no, I'm always deep in the culture. I go, go to the country I go to. I get what you're saying. I mean, I, you don't just black out. And yeah, you don't black yeah, out. You kind of get the highlight. Yeah. Uh, somebody you pregnant. You definitely get away from the everyday. I ain't gonna say everyday, but you get away from the negativity of the politics in the United States, the black on white, the the Mexican jokes or. You know what I mean? Like the border hop comments. You get away from that shit because it is non existent in other countries. Like, for whatever reason, you get over there and the vibe is just way different. But that first year, you back. It's a culture. You, what, shock. Was your, what was your first duty station in the States? Albany. Oh, I, oh. <laughs> Crazy, but I chose Albany. I chose Albany for more reasons than one. Because um, at that time, I, was, I had six years under my belt without being in the States at all. And then, like, I wasn't their family. You know, I kind of yeah. wanted to, I was growing older, but I'm growing older, but I got to realize, like, yo, I got siblings that's growing older, too, so they're hitting, like, graduations for uh, for high school and things of that nature. I'm like, yo, that's stuff that I don't want to miss. I'm yeah. like, yo, get me to the East Coast as quick as possible, or as close as possible to, uh, to up north. But I started going down the list, and uh, Quantico, cl- nobody. Lejeune, I was like, do I want the, the big almighty Marine Corps at this point, especially in my career? Because uh, I guess this kind of can be uh, a pointer for some people. You could probably argue it. You can argue if you can. But at the time, I knew I was picking up uh, Sergeant. I knew I was picking up E5 uh, by the time I got either – by the time I got got here or like a couple months after, I knew that was going to be the case. And my mindset at the time was, I was like, I know how in certain units how the big Marine Corps can go to where you pick up E5 and hey, you just at the bottom of the list. Like, it is what it is because all these other people have kind of made the way. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me hustle backwards. Let me go to a small duty station. Yeah, I'm going to be E5, but... I'm the E five. I'm the E five, and you know, I already knew uh, my I already knew the, my boss at the time. I knew he was coming to Albany as well, so I'm like, okay, cool. 
he doing his damn thing. He could kind of mold me. Yeah, that's a smart career move. Mold me to be what yeah. I need to be at, and then I'm good. Like, instead of being lost and trying to figure out shit, like, yo, no, he going to grab me on this wing. Cause that's a smart sm- career move. Small duty stations, motherfucker, they have no choice to <laughs> to put you under their wing. So, it's like, yeah, so that was my, that was my reasoning. So, yeah. But with that, being in the South, how was it? Ah, and mind you, I'm from Baltimore. Like I, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm from Baltimore. Shout out 410 443. Uh, it was a culture shock. It was a culture shock in so many ways because it was the dialect of the down south dialect can be so thick and so fast to where it's like, and then I fall, I'm fast. <laughs> and I'm trying to sing Future right now. <laughs> I'm trying to sing March Madness. But it, it, was, it was so thick, so fast. And I'm like, it almost sounded like another language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because at that point, I was used to hearing Italian all the time. And, you know, once you get around a certain dialect and language, it becomes slower or whatnot. So I'm like, what? Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, all right, cool. Kind of slow pace or whatnot. And then I guess what really threw me off once we started doing funerals, right? And we go to, like, these Hick, backwoods backwood hick towns and i'm like all right cool you know and at this point i guess being at other duty stations you hawaii you assume like everybody's was saying yeah i just kind of assume like okay you on in the military you have someone that's passing like your loved one has passed so it's like Bitch, ain't no time to be racist. Like, that that's how I felt. So, and what I mean by this is... I'm you probably t- didn't even think it through, honestly, to keep it a buck. Like, you... I never, was so... I was part of so many mixy cultures. Yeah, it never crossed your mind, like, she's gonna look at you or he gonna look at you a certain way simply because you're black. Yeah. Like, to me, that, it wouldn't cross my mind. Oh. Uh. But, like, like you said, like, damn, I'm at a funeral and you still <laughs> treat me like this? Like, I'm here for you. Yeah, no, I want to tell the stories because it's like, okay, you know, we do, fun- like, for those that don't know that's not in the military, we do funerals or whatnot. We do the, on the movies when they do the 21 gun salute, all that stuff. But sometimes we do, uh, we call them three man team funerals. So, part of a three man team funeral, we went to, like, some backwoods area in Florida, right? Get that hour prior, practice, show my, I'm the senior man on the team. So, you know, I'm gauging everything out, most experience, bam, this is what we need to do, X, Y, Z. Go back in the van, wait for a bit, because we always got to get there hour prior or whatnot, make sure we good. So, uh, we chilling, see the family. I'm like, all right, it's showtime. And what I mean by showtime is kind of you got to put on that show. Make sure the family good. Talk to whoever you need to talk to because you got to talk to the funeral director to know the next of kin and all that good stuff. And like you said, you're there for the family, <laughs> right? Get get inside the church, right? Oh, you know, we love Marines, blah, blah, blah. blah. All right, cool. Heard it all before, but I'm still smiles, shaking hands, hugs. If you want pictures, got my team lined up to do pictures, the whole nine yards. All right. Talked to the funeral director. I was like, okay, uh, who the next of kin? So I know either I'm a, like we said early in the podcast, I'm either going to stand or I'm going uh, to take a knee, right? Uh, with the lady over there and we'll just say the blue, right? I'm like, all right, cool, bam. Cause I'm like, all right, cool. And then that's when he went to her. And I could kind of, I could read lips in a sense. Oh, who's presenting the flag? Mind you, it's two black. It's two of us are black, and then there's one white guy. One white guy. He was at the bottom of the totem yeah, pole. Lance so, Corporal. Yeah, yeah, goddamn Lance Corporal PFC. So that motherfucker playing the goddamn electronical bugle that we got. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah. So point at me. I have the most chevrons. I had the most shiny pieces on my on my chest for it. Right. I see it. The head shake. That shit went to like a goddamn cousin or great nephew. And then he come back to me like, yeah, uh, she won't be accepting the flag. It'll be somebody else. Mind you, she never even came up to us. Yeah. Anything. And I was like, you know, why, you know, why not? You know, she's a little older. I was like, 
And I'm yeah, like from the south. Well, what that mean to like, me? Like, what does that mean? Like, uh, you know, she kind of still living that that time frame. And I'm like, say no more. I'm good. All right, I'm good. Love and joy. <laughs> Fuck your flight. <laughs> hit, hit it with a frisbee on that. One. Yeah, but nah, I, we we still did our thing. Yeah. But it was like, damn, you know. In a sense, I I would. I respect your husband because he paved the way for me, yeah. military, doing this damn thing. But see, you still hold on to some shit like that. To that point right there, to your question earlier, what defines a true patriot? That right there. Because you could have easily been like, you know what? As a service member, doing you and your family justice, I'm here to honor your family. But because you want to be an asshole and still have your racist ways, you could have just spazzed out. I mean, yeah, I probably like, had talked oh, to she, major. She want to be racist, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm done with the whole thing. Like, she don't know, you know what I mean? How that affected you? Yeah, true. You there to do a job for her? This ain't nothing. This is not beneficial for you at any way. This is actually extra work for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, we outside your MOS. It's probably on the weekend. It's so, on the work week, but I, like I always tell, not to cut y'all, but I always tell people is, like, for real, for real, like, being in Albany, we drive about two to three hours yeah, just do to do funerals, sh- yes. right? We, and we got to get there about an hour, two hours prior for a show time that only may last 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. If that, depending on where we going. If we go on first, the shit lasts five minutes, and we out riding back. Don't get reimbursed for goddamn getting food. We take a govy, so it's not like yeah, we're taking our own cars. It's not a pocket for gas. Yeah, or nothing, so th- that's that's cool or whatnot. But damn, you know, you still get it treated that way. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So like, that's a prime example. Y'all went to the EO? No, nah, I can't go to EO nah, for that. Nah, you're civilian. <laughs> yeah. Like, what can you do? <laughs> but that's a prime example. You in uniform, you paying respects to her family, and you still get treated like shit. Yeah. But that's for the people out there, you know, that sometimes they forget that racism is still alive, that the troops ain't the top priority for some of these people that are screaming, oh, Colin Kaepernick is disrespecting the troops. That's not the case because here you are, a black man, black service member in uniform, still being disrespected. Yeah. Who so the you hell going to defend you? I came here to offend you. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> he on his battle rap. That shit. was Pat Poofs back in the day, two thousand three. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So like when I said it earlier, whereas I've been discriminated against, and sometimes I do believe that even with the uniform on, I get some some leeway, but it's still people that just don't fuck with black people. Yeah, I that's... don't know. And to me, my thing is, I don't understand why it's hard for American or America to get that. Like, we still dealing with it, yes. But for somebody to say, oh, well, Colin Kaepernick, what oppression has he gone through? It's not necessarily about him. He represent for me. Exactly. He represent for the motherfucker that don't have a platform to stand on and say, I'm being treated unequally. I'm yeah. being treated unfairly. That's what it's about. You know what I mean? Like, that's what the whole movement was originally started for. Again, I get it. It's po- police brutality. But it's deeper than that when you think about where the police brutality roots from. You know what I mean? Like, people will say, oh, uh, the, uh, shit, not the NAACP. The Black Panther Party is a, is a racist group. No. People, people wanted to use that all the time. Well, what about the Black Panthers? Well, they got started to protect their neighborhoods from the Klansmen from the police officers at the time that were all white police brutality and that's where our crips like yeah not that's where bring... bloods and crips yeah, started from yeah. to protect the neighborhoods too but obviously again you, <laughs> you start giving motherfuckers resources and they, they start losing their way yeah or not but that's where uh, again that's where it came from so with that with that story that you just told it's a prime example why some of these people i just don't feel caught the message and received it well because they still saying, oh, you're disrespecting the troops. Okay, but so is the motherfucker with the Confederate flag. So is the, the white female that you're at her funeral 
paying homage to her family that says she won't accept the flag from you because it's being given to her from a black man. Yeah. Again, that's worse to me than Colin Kaepernick taking a knee. Shit, and then some of these active duty motherfuckers that, 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 <laughs> that be running. Cats be running doing colors. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's worse because to me, you have an obligation. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick ain't got no obligation to stand. We I'm fight not, for his obligation. Yeah, I'm not mad at anybody that decides not to stand. That goes for the people that's watching the game and the national anthem is playing at home, at the bar, or wherever you at when it's when the national anthem is played. I'm not mad at you for not standing up. God damn! Oh, it's my bathroom break. <laughs> no, I mean, no, <laughs> Let me go stop, get these wings. stop and pay homage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are you eating? No, stop eating. But I'm not mad at that. I respect all that because of what I fight for, what, I, what, what, what it means to me to be a Marine or a soldier in the, in the military. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I understand what I'm fighting for. What and you I understand that, for. Yeah, and I understand that what I'm fighting for may not be the same thing that I stand for, if that makes sense. Because I'm fighting for your right and your freedom to have an opinion that may differ from mine. And I understand that, and I'm, I'm okay with that. But don't let your difference in opinion become an issue to where we can't bond or we can't come together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we could disagree on a lot of things, but at the end of the day, we're still human. So I should be able to still come and talk to you about certain things. Yeah. Hmm. I shouldn't have a problem with you or you shouldn't have a problem with me because I agree with Kaepernick and you don't. We just don't agree on it. But you shouldn't blackball I, I feel like you shouldn't blackball the man like okay you, you want to protest cool you protest his protest i got it but don't don't be an asshole about it because oh well fuck this motherfucker he shouldn't do this he's disrespecting the truth but don't speak for me yeah he ain't disrespecting me and there's always be the ones yeah. that never serve <laughs> talk about it <laughs> and, and and it's like i, I kind of get irritated that you know Draft Dodgers? Let's talk about well, it. Well, Draft Dodgers and, you know, the ones like, well, I could have served, but this happened. I mean, you know, mind you, certain things does happen because, you know, recruiters, for those that don't know, they fucking screen to disqualify because they don't want to, you know, it's a lot of stuff they have to screen for. But, you know, if you never really wanted to serve, then it's like, all right, bam, you ain't never want to serve. And then I forgot my last point. I don't know, but I'm going to switch it right quick. Go ahead. Because you hit the, the the recruiter thing, and it goes. Not everybody meant to be military. They're not. And that's just flat out. Even cats that's in the military ain't cut out to be military. Because if they were, they would do twenty. Everybody would do their twenty. Huh. Some people, you you. I'm not gonna say you lose your way or you find your way or nothing like that. But it just you find a different avenue or something else that intrigues you. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's yeah. more beneficial for you and your family, whatever the case may be. So I'm not going to say the military, you know, everybody needs to do it. No. This shit ain't cut off for everybody. It's not. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, like, you have if to have you are a, used a very special to, you, tolerance for it. Yes. That's a fact. <laughs> like, you, And I honestly tell people, like, yo, the older you get, the harder it is to join. Because there's a lot of the, the bullshit that you got to deal with as if you were a child. And it goes back to me saying that instant willing obedience to orders. Because if I'm 23, 24, went to college, got my degree, I'm not listening to an 18, 19-year-old tell me to sit down and shut the fuck up. I would say depending on the branch of service you well, join. Strictly from the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm from the Marine Corps mindset. So you got a 19, 20-year-old corporal, sergeant, and you got a 24, 25-year-old Lance Corporal that just got his degree. It's an imbalance there. So I'm going to tell you, the harder it is, the older you get, the harder it is to come in. Yeah, you better. Because I'm talking shit. If I I know my shit as a 19, 20, 21-year-old NCO and you coming in, fuck your degree. I don't care if you're 25, 26. I've been doing this shit for three, four years. Hey, get in line. (laughs) So, again, instant with no obedience to orders that, like, that resonates, you know what I mean? So, it's, hey. Oh, that's crazy. 
right, my last question to you is uh, I wanted to do this on another, another podcast. But, hey, come uh, back, man. We can do Hey, you, uh, you brought up a good point, right? So, um, the Marine Corps, we kind of so I got two questions for you. So, Marine Corps, we kind of pride ourselves of our NCOs, right? So, if you take the average age of NCO, is about what now? Nowadays, is about 19 to about 22, say about, Yeah, that's about 22, 23-ish. 23-ish, right? So, uh, average age. So, for those that don't know what an NCO is, you know, it's a non-commissioned officer. It's the backbone of the Marine Corps, right? So, they say. So, they say. <laughs> so, it's the backbone. That's like the end of be all. It's like the backbone. It's the mother. That's... that's it's a general. It's the biggest population of the Marine Corps, and it's probably more the the most relied upon. To yeah. what to to the point where they call it the backbone. Yeah, like I said, it's the biggest age group, that were the biggest population wise, and it's probably the most relied on to get things done because we focus heavy on small leader, small unit leadership. Yeah, right. So that's that's kind of the idea of where the uh, the backbone comes from. Yeah. So so that age range, right? So you got mentors. Most of them are mentors at that point. To yeah, they they, they oh. bringing up the 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Yeah. So when we talk about mentorship, mentor is mentorship for life. Like you're talking about finances, day to day struggles. Education, maybe girl problems, give or take ish. Yes. Right? right. <laughs> yes. If I'm 18 and my mentor is about 22, does that really hold weight? When you look at it just from the number standpoint, probably not. <laughs> I just keep it a book. Yeah. Just from a number standpoint, because again, some people you can't see the maturity in them in a three year, four year age difference. Yeah. So if you tell me like, okay, if I look at you and I don't see the maturity in you, you can't mentor me. That's just me personally. Exactly. I don't care if you're you could be But the Marine Corps pushes it so much. True. And I have a problem with it me to too. a degree. Um I have a a lot. Me at my always. age and where I'm at, I still look for mentors. To this day, I still do it, and and I would I would I would encourage anybody still pursuing stuff in life. I don't care what age or what level you at to find a mentor, find somebody you look up to to ask for advice. But back to your question, I have a problem with it because for two reasons. One, I would I would prefer you to find a mentor. That you're comfortable with talking to. And two, not everybody that's, and some people are going to look at me funny for this, not everybody that's an NCO is able to lead Marines. I, I, I totally agree, and that's what I was getting to. And I say that because I'm not knocking um, meritorious promotions or anything like that, but I feel like we push meritorious promotions too much. And that's just the Marine Corps side of it and my perspective. I go in deep on, like, how I view meritorious promotion or whatever, but I just feel like the mentor tree is a good tool to use, but I feel like a lot of it is being misused because the people that we're appointing as mentors, I don't fully, I don't think fully understand what it means to be or are in a position to where they are ready to be mentors. And I, I think it's more one-sided for them being mentors. It's maybe just the Marine Corps aspect and not. The, that's all they, honestly, that's all they know. And not the over, overall, because, you know, when you talk about mentorship as a whole program, like for real, for real, when you're dealing with, when you're really mentoring somebody, like you could really make or break somebody fucking credit score. <laughs> so if they get get out, that's like you can either set them up for success or set them up set them up for failure. Yeah, prime example. Day. Like I said, um, think about it. 
Somebody come in and do their four years, right? From 18 to 22. That's your four years right there. You're done. You think about three years in, almost hitting that four-year mark. I'm three years in, I pick up sergeant. But I'm, I'm getting out. I got the I don't give a fuck attitude. I'm getting out. The Marine Corps fucked me over. That's that's air quotes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah, if y'all don't know. But the Marine Corps fucked me over. I got that attitude, right? But you're assigned a mentee. So now me coming in fresh out, like green I ain't got to no life, choice. Green but, to yeah. society. 18 year old hit the fleet, Lance Corporal. My mentor is a 22, 21, 22-year-old. He's getting out. He don't give a fuck. But he's mentoring me about my future. Life. People don't realize, like, yo, the military sets you up with a career at 18. At 18, they give you the fucking keys to a Ferrari. <laughs> at 18, most people don't find their careers to win. After college, you think about four-year major, uh, a four-year major college, five-year yeah. sometimes, six. Yeah. After that, like, it's people, no shit, go to college four years and still haven't found their way. Yeah. But you got an 18-year-old out in the world, possibly married. Let's go 19. Let's say 1920. Married with one kid, maybe one on the way. He's an adult. Yeah. But he's he's literally a kid. To society standards. Yeah. Because yeah. he don't know anything. He graduated high school. He went to boot camp. Now he's in the fleet. He's been in a year, year and a half, two years. His mentor is somebody that don't give a fuck no more. Mm, Fucking with no car no more. Facts. It happens. <laughs> yeah. It happens. So that's why I say, like, I agree with the mentor process, but I feel like we need to do a better vetting process of the mentors. I, I think, honestly. Could it be bumped up? I think so. I, I think so, and, and and the thing that I don't like about us is because we we, it's not wrong with taking pride in things, but you could take pride in the wrong shit. <laughs> yes. At the end of the day, and I think we take pride we're too prideful sometimes. We we're too prideful in the wrong shit, and that's why we don't retain people because it's like it's almost like the blind leading the blind. And what I mean by that is because it's like okay, you have somebody that's eighteen that just joined, but. Like you said, due to meritorious promotions or just maybe the MOS may be small or mad people getting out to where cutting scores just may be so low to where you got somebody that may be, so I said 18, so in the other end perspective, we may have somebody be like 20, 21 that got promoted to Corporal Sergeant E45, yeah. and it's like you just got promoted because of the, the cut scores are so low and they just need bodies. You got to mentor this person about it's life. I'm like, Mind you, this is life. That's why and I, I agree with you, but that's why I say I feel like it's on that individual to seek out a mentor. Because there's nothing stopping, let's just say I'm going to sign you a mentor. Yeah. And me and you, I, I, I talk to you, but like you don't feel my vibe, right? You, yeah. don't, you don't feel like, like this motherfucker's just not, I don't feel confident that he's teaching me or, or showing me the way. There's nothing stopping you from going to talk to somebody else. But it's also and the scare tech that, that we, we produce true. in the Marine Corps true. of a fucking, a, if you're a goddamn PFC, you better go through a Lance Corporal. Lance Corporal go to a Corporal. Corporal go to a Sergeant. You better not fucking talk to your goddamn staff and CO. So it's like, yo, you have these people. I feel as old, like the Navy, like for the Navy, Chiefs are, I believe Chiefs are like the core of the Navy, the Chief Mess. So that's what E seven, yeah E seven is like the core of the Navy. Hell yeah, I would want somebody older to fucking be my goddamn mentor just because it's like yo. Not to say all Chiefs are established. You still got some some that's fucked yeah, up. That's I mean, still like Lance's, that but with any that older like, that yeah. older experience. So it's like I, I have more of a chance of like yo, yo the blind not leading the blind, and then in another branch of service versus our service because we're so young and we fucking rotate like fucking hotcakes. Yeah. Boss. But again, I mean, that's just me. Um, like I said, me at my age where I'm at my career, I still seek out mentors. Well, yeah, but who would, would you find a E1 seeking you out? 
if they saw your collar <laughs> and the trauma that they just went through, <laughs> mind you, boot camp and whatever they had to go through. I don't see it, no, um, for two reasons. One, like you said, they they probably just scared to approach me. But that's where me as a leader, though, I'm letting it be known, like, you can come and talk to me. But again, not all people going to do that. Not all staff and CEOs or whatever going to do that. But me personally, yeah. and, and you can ask any Marine that has ever worked with me that's been under me. Hell, you can even ask my peers. Like, I'm always open. If you want to talk to me about anything, life, marriage, finances, women just in general, just weekend conversations, career, you can always come talk to me. Not Like I said, I don't know if anybody else can attest to or agree with that, that statement, but me personally, ask any Marine that's ever worked under me. They'll tell you the same thing. Like, I'm always approached by and I'll tell you, like, hey, I don't care who your mentor is, you – let them know, like, hey, you know, I want to go talk to Staff Sergeant about something. I want to go talk to Ford about something. Cool. They tell you no, come talk to me anyway. Because <laughs> what me and you going to talk about is between me and you. Yeah. I'm not telling you, hey, go fuck, do 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 and tell him fuck off. But if you tell him, like, I want to go talk to Staff Sergeant Ford about something, and he say no, cool. But come talk to me. Because it's between me and you. This is your life. This is your career. Nobody cares about your career more than you do. Yeah, but they're still great in society, so I don't know no better. True. <laughs> but if you got that individual that you're looking up to telling you come talk to you, and if you're not man enough, woman enough to come talk to that person, I can't help you anyway. Yeah, it's just one of those things they don't they don't know any better. Mind you, like I said earlier, the Marine Corps, the leadership style, the leadership that we kind of produce is like, yo, you bet not. Like, even though the goddamn warrant officer said I have an open door policy, you better not fucking go. You better fucking brief me before you fucking go talk to him, bitch. Like, True. I mean, a lot <laughs> and of he that, may be on some shit like, or she may be on yeah. some shit like you is. But see, a lot of that shit too is what the section. No, no, no. It's it's minimizing the bullshit mm. because you'll get those Marines that come talk about bullshit that. You could have handled. Yeah. Like you know I mean, like if it's a legit life situation, nobody's gonna ever talk like, okay, you know, you went behind my back, but you, you know what I mean, you got the info that you needed, cool. But if I tell you like, fuck that, you gonna come see me before you go talk to him, and then you go talk to him like, sir, um, I want to get a car. Now I'm pissed off, you know what I mean? Because like that shit, I could have helped you with. If you want to talk about getting a car, you're not gonna go talk to the OIC about that shit. Hey, you never know because different information. I'm, I'm being dead serious. It may be different information that you know that or that the OIC knows. But you're versus... not going to talk to the OIC about buying a fucking car. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't care where you at, what service you in, yeah. what branch you in. PFC is not going to talk to the fucking OIC. OIC may be the plug. He might, And if that's the case, if he's the plug, hey, uh, help yourself. He can... Shit, I, hey, he gave me a deal too, so I'm going to talk to him too. Yeah, but, you know what I mean, you. like... It comes, like, again, it comes to the common sense factor or to the point where people just got to use genuine common sense, honestly. Like, certain things just don't need to be taken up so far. But like I said, it it depends on the relationship that you have with your mentor, mentee. Junior Marine. In your your shop environment. Yeah. Because I, I get and I agree with what you're saying. Sometimes it's the blind leading the blind. But more often than not, if you in a section where you, your Marines jail, they know each other, you're not going to have that individual backdooring you on some simple shit. Yeah. Like, you might tell him, hey, don't go fucking talk to this person, but he'll tell you, like, look, man, I know you said don't do this, but I really need to talk to this specific person. And that's because y'all got that bond. Y'all can communicate like that. Where it comes into play is where you got these motherfuckers that you might not get along with somebody, but you in charge, not necessarily you in, in Yeah. But you don't get along with somebody, but he's like, man, this motherfucker, I can't talk to him, but I don't fuck with him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know he's shady or whatever the case yeah, might be. Yeah. That's where you get a lot of those issues. Nine times out of ten, if you got a good shop, y'all jail, you're not going to get those issues. You're not going to get those situations where that Lance Cobra back doors, you can go talk to whatever, whatever, unless that higher up is just, off on his weekend time hanging with that individual. Yeah. Then they got that, you know what I mean, that chemistry where you don't even know about it, 
because that happens too. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. It so, does. I mean, yeah, you get those situations. Like I say, mentor, mentee, I believe in it, but I just feel like it should be a two-way street, not, hey, this is your mentor, go talk to him. Exactly. I feel like y'all should have a bond because, again, I'm not taking information from a motherfucker I really don't vibe with yeah. or I don't feel like I can benefit from. Exactly. Why am I talking to you if I feel like I know more about it than you do? Yeah, let me get a ginger beer real quick. Uh, I'm going to ask one last question to you. Okay. This is a uh, Pump Too Difficult podcast. Um, I've asked a couple individuals about the the same question, and it, it, it goes hand in hand because of something that, what, who we on? Anybody say anything good? Hey, y'all need to come back on. Oh, uh, uh, she got damn uh, bartending that got uh, a family reunion on base. I ain't know they. Uh, I guess we're talking about the bar because she was on December. Uh, December 10th. I don't know if she's back now or not. Um, it is what it is, man. We got video content. Yo, we still in here. <laughs> oh, let me pull my drink. Sorry, y'all. You know, uh, for those, shout out to all my unpredictable thoughters. It's only one person. <laughs> Yo, thank you for, for staying. This is my last question for Ford. Goddamn drinking a Moscow Mule. Still sipping my Syrah. I got to re-up, but. Yeah. This my, like, third cup. You sipping. <sighs> I don't well, know if y'all can see Chris or not, but. That is what Unpredictable is. Thoughts Podcast. Yo, get the headphones back in. So, uh, my last question to you is, right? Who did you vote for? I I'm didn't. Fu- I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. Nah, that was nah, my, I'm going to keep it a buck. <laughs> that wasn't my question. That was my, my question is you, for real, for real, on the honest note is, um, so what I knew coming on, uh, he is on like a dis- disruptive disruptive thinker's wave. I don't know if you sold it like the DeMar admins for that, but he, he wants kind of like disruptive thinkers. What could you, so my question is, what would you change about the Marine Corps? And I want a solution. Damn, you gonna hit me like that? Yeah, it's unpredictable thoughts podcast. I keep it real simple. Um, yeah. I think my thing one has thing always would change. Been, yeah, um, how we promote. Oh, in what ways is it? Are you talking about listed? Are you talking about officers? Are you talking about from E one to E four? I'm gonna touch. I'm gonna touch the officer side of it. You know what I mean, um, go all sides. Or shit, I. I you give me, you tell me what you want. I'm going to give you my I'm going to hear officer opinion. side. I mean, right, I don't, so I don't really know how the promotion is. So. And it, and it kind of ties into what we were just talking about, where where I'm at, and it, and it hit me, honestly, when I was in Pendleton probably like two months ago, three months ago, I had a um, first lieutenant. He'd been in maybe three years. <laughs> and yeah. in my mind, I'm not thinking like, okay, I've been in 14 years. He's been in three. I've been, I, and how I viewed it was, he's an officer. He yeah. outranks me. Yeah. But the thing that got me tripping was he was asking me dumbass questions. He was asking me Lance Corporal questions. And I'm looking at him like, Bitch, you don't know this? Like, sir, you you supposed to be telling me this shit. But then that's when it hit me. So I asked him. I was like, um, and we just got to talking. So he was like, you know, how long you been in? I was like, 14 years. And he's like, I was like, how long you been in? He says three. So that's when I got to thinking like, damn, I'm at the level now where I ain't mentoring him, mm. but he's still in charge of me. You know what I mean? Is like, that fair? Do you deem it fair? I, I don't think it is. To me, it's not about what's fair, what's not fair. I, just I mean, feel he like, your, they, they had the power to pin on right your fit reps, depending on where yes, you're Yes, that, that's exactly you, where it is. Yeah, but, your career could go either left or right. And this is where uh, tying back into the mentor-mentee relationship goes. Whereas 
I'm at the level now where I am mentoring these junior Marines. In the essence, junior Marines because he's been in three years. He don't know how to fucking approach senior staff and CEOs, let alone somebody that's just now at the at the bottom of the staff and CEO rank. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he don't know how to approach a uh, 22 year old, a uh, 22 year master sergeant or master guns or first arm. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like okay, he's he's asking me, do he need to stand in and clean up with the Lance Corporals? And I'm like, no, sir. Like they they clean up, we leave. He should be like, hey, hey, you need to stay like, in there. I was saying, like, you the one that's supposed to be telling them to clean up. No, you don't stay here. So, like, when the gunny was telling the Marines, to, you know, to clean up and start squaring away the shot or the classroom for the day, he was like, uh, do I stay? I'm like, no, sir, you fucking leave. Like, they look up to you. You don't sit back. You know what I mean? So, that's why I was at to the point where it was like, and I got to thinking, like, okay, at what point do we, I get it, you know, officers, they at the top, staff and COs. And then junior Marines. But it's like, if I'm mentoring the fucking junior officers, what do I catch a break when it comes to, like you said, fit reps, where this guy's writing my, he's got my career in his hands, but I'm fucking teaching him how to be a Marine. Yeah. Like, how does that, you know what I mean? You might so as well, like, hey, sir, like, uh, D, 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 D. <laughs> and, and that's where, it, like, again, that's why, so that's why I wanted to talk on the officer side of it, because when it comes down to staff and CEO promotions, I'm getting written on by somebody that's been in the Marine Corps five years. Mm, so it doesn't hold weight in, because they do average. It does because your markings affects me w- compared to my peers. It's not just about what I get. It's about what I get compared to my peers. Yeah. So you get 4646. Four, it don't matter where they come from. I get fucking low markings on my fit rep. It kind of matters, but it also goes into play with what my peers got. So if we get the same one, the same markings, but he's got somebody that's been in fucking 20 years, and I got somebody that's been in five years, his hold more weight. Oh, shit. So they looking at it like, well, you know, they got the same markings, but this dude only been in three, four years. Well, he's got the markings of somebody that's been in 20 years. His profile a lot better, a lot heavier. It resonates more. This dude, I'm the only person he wrote on. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, you know, he affects my promotion. In a sense. Oh, it's, it's, yes, it's definite. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, and like you said, that's where it comes to the mentor mentee thing. I feel like at a certain level, my fit rep should be written by somebody a little bit more seasoned when it comes to promotion because that affects my paycheck. Yeah, it affects my whole career. You but you want to put it, yeah, you want to put it in the hands of somebody that that's still learning how to fucking be a mentor. So is still it learning how to be a leader? Like, uh, would you say? I guess the resolution be like a O three O four. I feel like yeah. I feel like honestly, and, and I don't want to say this to to fuck over the sergeants or whatever, but if anything, I feel like the. O one, O three, first and second lieutenants. Uh-huh. They should start writing on corporals that's getting ready to pick up, because they can get a feel. Not necessarily it counts as a profile, it but count. they get a feel of how to write a fitness report on a corporal, so that way that corporal can get a feel of what it's like to write a fitness report. So that way you have a year, two years, however long you're a corporal to a sergeant, you have that that time period to understand how to write a fit rep what goes on a fit rep and how to read a fit rep. Yeah. As opposed to when I'm a sergeant, I get a brief class and now I'm writing a fit rep. And some shit that don't even apply to my MOS. You know what I mean? So now yeah. now I'm writing a fit rep. But like, damn, I just picked up. I don't really know how to do it, but I'm writing it because this is what's going to get me promoted to stats on. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I, I told everybody, like, all the PME schools, I think they should be one grade ahead. You should be a corporal going to sergeant scores. Why am I a sergeant going to sergeant scores? Huh. Why am I a staff sergeant going to staff academy? Yeah. Because, All that shit should be a grade ahead. Yeah, and, and I get what you're saying because it's like in promotions, if you want to go technical, they the Marine Corps, what would you say the Marine Corps? I, I'd probably say, i say all branches. I'd just say all branches. And all branches of service is saying basically from E4 to E5, right? If I'm an E4 getting promoted to E5, it's saying that I've shown characteristics of an E5. Yes. That's why I'm getting promoted to E5 because I have 
the potential and already I have the maturity of becoming an E5. So why am I going to, why am I hitting E5 then going to an E5 seminar? I get, I, I get exactly what you're saying. And like I, 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 I totally agree. I've always been an advocate of that. Like go earlier. If I'm a corporal, I should I don't think be you're going. eligible for it. You're not. <laughs> Like, I should be, as a corporal, going to sergeant's course, learning how to be a sergeant, learning what it takes to be a sergeant. That's when I should be the, doing The background of yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, I should be getting that information for that, that brand new corporal. Like, as soon as I pick up, boom, hey, I want to go to sergeant's course. Yeah. So that way, I, as I'm in my, my billet, working or whatever, I understand what it takes to be that senior NCO. Yeah. And if I'm a sergeant, I want to go to Staff Academy because now I'm working on becoming a leader. So when I pick up, I know what I need to do, not teaching me what I'm supposed to already know. Yeah, because it's like you have people that pick up E5 and don't and have go to, no fucking clue. But don't even go to sergeant's course about two, about two to three years after. Same thing with it gets worse as you get up. <laughs> it's, I got, I ain't going to drop no names, but it's a dude in Albany right now. Who's a staff sergeant? Hasn't been to staff academy. Don't plan on going. Don't care about going. But he's in Albany as a staff sergeant. Mm. And the only way he's gonna pick up gunny is if he go to staff academy. But what? clearly, he don't know how to be a gunny sergeant because he don't want to go to staff academy. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So like, that's why that shit to me needs to be a, a grade ahead. That uh, he shouldn't be a staff sergeant if you're not fucking willing to go to staff academy. See, I like that. I like that. And I, I kind I guess I'm going to kind of contradict myself with this. Uh, but I also like how the Army does it. So I'm going to go three ways with this, right? So like you were saying earlier, uh, E4 should have kind of like fitness reports, right? E, yeah. Yeah. So I believe from shit, E2 to E4, well, E2 and up, you should have an evaluation report because I believe that when you're growing up, let's say growing up in the military or the Marine Corps itself, from E1 to E3 right now, all you really got to worry about is PT, <laughs> the rifle range, and a little bit of McMap. McMap doesn't really hold weight like that. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. right? So then once you hit E4, you have to. You're NCO, and then that's when you have to mold people yeah. to get on your level. But at that point, you also have to be confident in your well, knowledgeable in your job. So that's what I'm saying. Like as far as evaluation reports, it has to be kind of job related as well. You have to have a healthy balance at the end of the day. That's a fact. Yeah, like because I don't want to be the way I view like uh, evaluations or whatnot and promotions. It's really like if I'm hitting E5, if my boss, so maybe my staff sergeant, right? If they're staff sergeant, yeah, you yeah, would just say uh, staff and CO as a whole. If they're if they was to take leave for about thirty days, will I be able to hold the shop down? No problem. <laughs> I can agree to that. Mind you, it may be some like higher level shit that I just don't have the. The credentials for, yeah, and but that's what just I on say, yeah. like uh, in a general work scheme, yes. yeah, general work scheme, like it don't it don't burn the fire. <laughs> so we're saying the same thing, but we're just arguing it different. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you, but like I said, it's just certain things you learn over time. Yeah, and, uh, understandable. And like I said, it's even me now. Like I said, that's why I still have a mentor. That's why I still seek out a mentor because I don't know it all. Like, I can gain some shit from you. Yeah. I'm not saying that my mentor has to be above me. My mentor has to be knowledgeable about certain things. And I just view older people as a knowledgeable source. So, as long as I can learn information from that that source, cool. But going back to where you said that one under should be able to do what the leader, you know, is capable of doing if they take leave or something. I wholeheartedly agree with that, but it's certain instances where I wouldn't necessarily put or trust too far down, regardless of uh, rank. I just don't the maturity level in a certain situation. So oh, yeah. I agree. That to disagree? No, no, no. no. Yeah. I agree with you. Like, if my boss leave, I should be able to step up and take charge and do whatever. But 
because of how the Marine Corps operates, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting a corporal in my position, you know what I mean, to like handle certain meetings or certain situations with different groups. Yeah. Me as a staff sergeant. Like, bitch, don't go. Just get the notes. <laughs> yeah, like just go in there, shut the fuck up, take notes. Don't <laughs> don't ask no questions, like type because you see you 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 kind of see it how we're if we go into a staff NCO meeting. You got master guns in there that's just salty. He don't give a fuck. He can't get promoted. If he, if he wants to, he can retire tomorrow. So if he's talking his shit, that corporal ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm a staff NCO. I can say a little Challenge. bit. Yeah. yeah. So like I say, yes, you should be able to you know do my job. But if it comes to a situation where, like let's just say take training, for instance. A corporal or sergeant can run the fucking training section all day long. But if you got a seasoned mass sergeant or a gunny coming in and tell you, hey, I ran a 280 PFT. <laughs> no, you didn't, mass sergeant. Yeah, I ran a 280 PFT. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got to fight that battle. Uh, and I, sh- shouldn't, I shouldn't be in a position where I can't, that corporal can't defend himself. Even though that's the right, online. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. He right. Like, no, you didn't, mass sergeant. Hey, I ran a 280, you know what I mean? Like, run that. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Like, I shouldn't be in that position. Or I yeah. shouldn't put that corp in that position, even though he knows everything, the ins and outs about this. I mean, that's what, that's like. that man's on the plug, then. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, it shouldn't come to a point where we have to go there, you know what I mean? So, like. But that man's on should know better to be like, facts. yo, just, yo, yes. when I come back from leave. Holla at me, I got you. Yes, <laughs> but it's also those mass sergeants that know, like, oh, shit, hey, gunny fucking high and tight, he ain't in there. Let's go in here and fuck with the last corporal right quick. Hey, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Got so, it, got it. Yeah, that's why yeah. I say, like, yes, I agree that you should be able to take your boss position because your boss, in essence, should be teaching you everything he knows. Yeah. So, he should be giving you his Well, somewhat job. to a certain level. Yes. Yeah. So, I agree with you, but it's certain instances where I just like, hey, uh, I know you know how to do this. I know you can do it. I'm just not going to allow you to do it because I don't want to put you in a position where you have to compromise your integrity because somebody is putting pressure yeah. on you. You know what I mean? And then I guess my next thing was uh, the Army does this, which I, I like. I guess Marine Corps doesn't hold numbers for it, so we, we won't be able to do it. Is for their advanced training. So, like, their sergeant's course, their staff and CO course, they go within their MOS alone. Like, yeah, when they go to a higher leadership, it's just within their MOS, and that's it. I like it because it's like, okay, it's MOS-related. Okay, what are you doing at this shop? Why are we not doing this? We could kind of politic, but I guess I kind of don't like it in a sense because it's like it's only one shop related. You don't kind of get that outside source of, maybe handling certain situations or whatnot? I think it, I can't speak to it for sure, but I'll yeah. say I think it's two things why they why we don't do it. The first one being Funding. money. Yeah, <laughs> being money. And like you said, you got some of these MOS that's small, you don't have a lot of people. So. And then two, I think they do it so we can network. Because we pre- they've been preaching it. I don't know how well they do it now, but at PME school, they preach networking. Because... It's about building the relationships. I I didn't want to go to fucking corpus course. I was forced to go. I never went. And I had a blast. I fucking left corpus course. I picked up. I was like, yo, I'm ready to go to Sergeant's course. I was literally, I lat moved in 2010, 2011, went to Sergeant's course around that time frame. So in between me going to the school for my new MOS, so I had two schools. I had the, the first one is the basic course and the following one. Went to basics, went to SARS course, and it was like, well, ain't you already like here TAD? You can't go TAD on TAD. I was like, look, I'm here. I'm going to school. All the thing I'm missing is the graduation. I want to go to SARS course and get me enough time to graduate SARS course and then go into my following school. I was like, all right, let's do it. So I'm in 29 Palms. I'm in the Air Wing, dog. Mm. Been in the Air Wing all my life. So I'm at 29 Palms. With the fucking with the ground pounders and shit. Yeah. Going to Sarge course. Greatest fucking time of my life. One of my closest homeboys. I don't know if he he probably ain't even watching. 
But uh, he on my Facebook page. He on my Instagram page. He used to be on my Snapchat, but I think he deleted me. But my boy uh, Samuel Jenkins, that's my dog. Like to the end, man. Like one of my closest partners. I met him out there. We we're both sergeants. To this day, like dude, cool as a fan. But that's what it's about, man. Like just networking and shit. Like I think I gained more from the people than the actual course. Yeah. Like, the course was to me was fun. Like I went there to get the knowledge to you know to become a sergeant, which I was already a sergeant, but. Basically, to be eligible for a staff sergeant. Um, <laughs> that's why most people go. That's why we go. Like, what, what's keeping a buck? But, um, so, yeah, I went there and network. Like I said, I was there with a bunch of dudes from the ground side. And you see, like, you hear all these stories, like, oh, the, the, uh, the grunts. Right? It was grunts that they didn't know how to do land nav. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. you see this shit, but you don't, you you hear about it, but you don't really see it. You're like, oh, the grunts, they they all the ground side. Yeah, yeah. Air wing, they soft. They da da we had cats from the air wing running fucking 300 PFTs around the grunts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you see you, that. You have it, grunts that fucking yes. unk the, the rifle range. Yes. So you <laughs> see that shit and it opens up your eyes. You're like, okay, it's not all bad. You know what I mean? Like, those motherfuckers, they slow. They can't run. They dumb too. Yeah. Okay, this ain't all that bad. So, like, just networking, you know, politicking with people. So that's one thing I think, well, two things. The funding and then just to get you out up, out of your box, so to speak, because nine times out of ten, you are around your community all the time. You yeah. go to conferences, you go to different trainings that's around your community, but you don't necessarily get uh, a tank guy with a lad guy with an uh, aircraft mechanic with a postal clerk. You don't get all those guys in one setting and different perspectives. Yeah, of for a the time same frame. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think that's why they do it. Um, just to help network, man. Uh, you know, get a different perspective from a different side of the uh, the Marine Corps, and just politic, man. Like I said, I think it's. I honestly, it's the only way I know. Honestly, because but you can. I don't know if you know, but you can go to other branches, uh, PME schools. For real? Yes. Like like uh, like a sergeant's yep thing. Oh shit. Yep. So my master guns, he went to Kaysen. Nah, the uh, new one. Oh. He went to the um I wanna say the Chiefs, the Navy's uh it might have been the senior chief, but he went to the uh the Navy's Chiefs course. Yeah. They hate like to do something crazy. But I think the Yeah, I, I was there I was there on the ship one time when they was doing that joint. <laughs> they they do some They don't haze, but shit. yeah, they No, they haze. It's legal hazing. <laughs> I was um, trying to shout out to the Navy. Nah, it's the uh, end doctor or whatever. But yeah, man, I think that's why. Like, the funding is the major one. That's that's why we don't. We don't have don't. enough bodies per MOS. Yeah. Mind you, and we uh, don't have enough money as the Army do. The yeah, Army the Army is directly money. funded from the United States government, so. Uh, Let's see. So, man, we, we wrapped it up about a lot. Yeah, um, it, it, it's a lot. I really like this. This is in two hours and 15 minutes. It's like one of my longest. But I'm telling you, though, I'm a deep thinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it, you know, as well, because... Deep thinking, of course, I'm going to just ask those questions as well. It's unpredictable thoughts. So it's like, whatever comes to mind, we're just going to flow with it. Yeah. I and mean, like it. I said, the, the conversation, to me, it felt smooth. It went, it was genuine because I ain't, I ain't making up shit. So yeah. um, it just flowed. <laughs> Slightly biased, unbiased opinion coming from me. Um, I support Cap. I support the police. I support uh what else, what else, what else? Military. Nike. I support Nike. Um, I support the military. I talk shit about people that don't stand and salute, but I still respect your right. Um, I talk shit to the Marines that take off doing colors. Or um, any per uh, uh, military personnel. Yeah. That do it. Um, and, let's and see. Don't don't speak for the veterans saying that, you know, car is disrespecting veterans. I'm not Nope, I'm not disrespecting yes, at all. So what I was trying to say earlier, what I forgot was like, yo, you know, uh, I, I, media or whoever the end all be all needs to stop putting the military as an agenda for this Kaepernick yeah, situation. Yeah, it's not about that. It, it's not that, like, at all. Like, I don't speak for everybody. I speak for me. But the military is not offended by Colin Kaepernick taking a knee during the national anthem. Yeah. The yeah. military is not offended by Nike supporting Colin Kaepernick. 
Yeah. And the crazy part, that, and I think the NFL has a contract with Nike till to like 2023. <laughs> Just so y'all know, I'm going to plug you right quick. <laughs> Nike, if you haven't bought stock, they have the NBA contract. Oh, for real? They have the NFL contract. They got contracts with certain schools in the NCAA. They provide all of that material for at least like 2024. Oh, shit. Some schools is further out. Yeah. I think the NFL is like 2028. Yeah. I don't know where the uh, NBA is at, but they just got the contract like last year. So it's at least five years. So if you haven't bought stock, Right about now, you know, they like eighty dollars a share or something like that. Yeah, so basically when that that whole shit bang bang hit, they was like like I think they, they dropped to like seventy. Yeah, they dropped two dollars. Yeah, seventy eight. I've been with them you know what I'm saying I've been <laughs> I've been riding with Nike for like the past three years. They at eighty, they closed out at eighty, eighty three. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the other day they dropped down to like seventy nine or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They, but they pay dividends. They've been at a, a continuous growth for the past three years that I've been with them. Um, if you, I mean, I can't tell you how to spend your money, but that's how I spend mine. I buy Nike. I invest in Nike. I support Nike. If you have the money for it, and, yeah. and that's the one thing I be telling people because it's like you know, it's not uh, cheap, and it's not a guaranteed payback. Yeah, it's not, and you know. I guess within the black community, since we were, you know, lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge of financially behind, you know, once you see like three Facebook posts of Nike stock, Nike stock, it's like, no, like, okay, yeah, it's good to buy it. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with buying it, but you had, you, you got to know when to buy. You got to know when to buy. You got to make sure you had the financial means and capability to buy. And don't be like, yo, I'm going to buy it. And then next day, yo, I got $1,000 off of it. $1,000 flip. It, it's, it's not drugs. Like, the only nah. way you're going to get that is like with some penny stocks or if, unless you invest in something that just take off. Yeah, yeah, Because that overnight shit ain't happening. <laughs> exactly. Especially Nike is like real, real low. Well, and it's, real, it's, real a, it's, a, it's a well-established company, so... Nike to me is a long term investment. It's not some overnight get get rich one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I say, say those for the penny stocks that could blow up or something like that. But Nike is a long term investment. You put your money into it, and you kind of just let it sit and make money over time. It's not gonna get you. Like I think in the three years, almost three years, I think I made I'm up like two hundred bucks. Oh. But. I got 11 share, and that 11 share made me 200 bucks. You know yeah. I mean? So, so some people are like, uh. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, the, it's the. It's good, but some people are like, nah. Ain't yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you, you just. It's sit money back. that you don't really care about. Yeah. You sit back, you let it build up, um, you earn your interest, and, and you just make, let your money make money. You yeah. put a couple hundred bucks in there, let it sit for a little while. Yeah. Uh, but this is a good podcast. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Enough for my podcast listeners to like the the the, the six of y'all that listen. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the six. Yes, yeah, shout out to six, six, six. <laughs> I'll push a T. <laughs> but nah, uh, yeah, yo, like for real, for real, I just, I kind of, I, I needed to get this one off for real, for real because it's just like, yo, you know, I want to kind of carve that lane for for the military because it's like, yo, people keep on throwing military this, military that, and it's like, yo, no one's from the military, especially in the black community. Nobody or, talking to us. Or no one's talking to yeah. us at all. And I'm like, yo, I sit down, talk with you, like, yo, blase, blase, this is what we doing, this is what we got going on. And, yeah. I've put it on my Facebook a couple times. Like, I legit want to talk to people to see where they're coming from and why they're upset about the protest, about Nike, about the whole nine, like about yeah. the police you brutality. You said he's like, yeah, I do a whole conversation yeah. with you. If you if you don't feel comfortable talking on on, on my post, inbox me. Yeah, I'm not gonna screenshot and post it. Yeah. Like as adults, we can sit down and converse, so you can get my perspective and I can get yours. That's what I'm about. Like understanding. If we can't mutually come to an agreement after that, then just so be it. But I don't hate you anymore, or I don't hate you any less. Like. Let's just try to Probably resolve it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Chances are, if we can't mutually come to an agreement or understand it, I probably won't. Block! But, <laughs> but at least let's get to a level where we can have the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Like, for, for us to not even have a conversation to the point where, like, we're friends on Facebook, we disagree on something, 
and we have a conversation or we can't have a conversation one about it, why are we friends on Facebook? Yeah. It's social media for a reason. Like social. You know what I mean? Media. Like I'm social not the most outgoing person. Yeah. But hey, I can I can have dialogue with anybody. Let's yeah. talk. Yeah. Let me let me help me understand. You I'm gonna help you understand me. Let's like, talk about it. Yeah. But if you can't get to that point, why are we on social media? Why are we friends on social media? Exactly. I don't hate you in life. It's just there's no need for you to be on my social media page if we not talking. Yeah, that's deep. That's why I say, like, my, my shit limited, man. Like, people got, like, thousands of thousands of followers or whatever, but, like, who do you really talk to? <laughs> like, sure. you be on social media for validation, but from who? People that you don't care about? Yeah. People that you don't talk to? That's deep right there. Yeah. Well, well. Like, what? It's social media. Talk to me. Shit, I'm telling you right now, people will probably tell you, like, damn, this fool, I don't really know him, but he hit me up. Got some dope shit. Hey, let's talk about it. <laughs> hey, that's your boy, Ford. That's my thoughts. Unbiased, biased opinion coming from a, uh, I don't say veteran. I'm just a military dude. You know what I mean? Active duty. Trying Marine, to make it. Trying to get to the finish line and wherever they see fit for me to be or across that finish line, at, that's where I'm going to be at. Yeah. It's been a blessing to me. I never talk bad about the military. Um, some people, hey, it ain't for them. It's been a blessing to me. I love it. And that's just what it is. Yeah. Uh, thank you for, uh, like I said, for the, for this podcast. I am trying to carve a lane for my military folks. So I, I do like uh, talking. I don't want to say interviewing. I do like conversing with military personnel. Or not, so uh, we will be doing the damn thing. I will be getting forward on again. Let's like, do it. Like, I'm yeah, with it. Play devil's advocate. Like I say, this is my first one, man. Um, it, and it, it was literally unpredictable thoughts off the top. Uh, some of the questions you hit me with. Obviously, all the questions I wasn't prepared for because yeah. we didn't talk about it beforehand, except for the Nike one. Nike, but a little the, the rapper one in the beginning. Barely, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, you kind of threw yeah. that one at me like right before we went on. But <laughs> hey, like I said, I'm all about it, man. I'm gonna give you my honest, my honest opinion. And hey, people ain't gonna agree with me. People gonna disagree. They gonna agree. Cool, whatever. But let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, right. But yeah, yo, this is unpredictable thoughts podcast, you man. Troubles in the building. Your boy Ford. Oh, thank you for tuning in. Something light, nothing too crazy. Hey, don't forget. About these hats, the dead hats, the stress or regular. Keep that same energy, black and white font. And I got I'm good, love, and joy, black and white font, multiple colors. Shout me out. Got get at me. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs>